Yeah. I am a bit heartless. Well, I'm one thirdless heart. Uh, one heart thirdless. <laughs> Sorry, one third of my heart works. <laughs> the, yeah, the other two thirds <laughs> doesn't. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics, and I'm delighted to say it's time to say a very, very good morning to Mr. Mike a Porky a Parry. Very good morning to you, Mr. Parry. A very good morning to you, Mike. And I have to say, you're absolutely right in your admiration for Ronaldo. Incredible. I think he is the most charismatic footballer ever. Is he not? I, I mean, you know, we've had people like um, who have we had in the past? We've had people like. Well, you could have Maradona. Well, well, I mean, look, they're, they're, they're great Gerd footballing Muller. stars, but you could have George Best. Yeah, but Maradona wasn't charismatic. George Best was definitely charismatic, yeah. right? Yeah, and so was. Old Eric yes. uh, Cantona, he Eric was very Cantona. charismatic. Gaza, uh, Gaza wasn't charismatic. Well, he was. No, he wasn't. No, oh, no, come on. no. Gaza, Gaza was cuddly and childish, and you know, full of him. juvenile well, fun and all that kind of stuff. What would you say is the definition stuff. of charisma then? Charisma is style, right? And uh, Ronaldo has the more style than any other footballer who's ever played football. That's true. And his ability to consistently keep a level of arrogance about himself, which he then endorses with extreme talent is is well, just pitch perfect. I think he's the hardest Absolute working I think he's the hardest working footballer. I agree in the with game. that as well. And I the agree reason with that. the reason that he's arrogant and the reason that he looks yeah. as, as as he does mm. is because he doesn't stop working. No. I don't know if you've seen that movie that came out like a couple of years yeah, ago. I have. I mean he is an incredible athlete. He is an incredible athlete. And the athlete. reason he is so uh, uh, incredibly consistent in yes. what he does is because yes. he works very hard at it. And he's thirty two years of age now but yeah. he looks like a man who's twenty two. And he could and, work and he's, probably for another eight years. Another eight years. Yeah. He's like a rubber band he's uh, he's uh, a Spring waiting to spring all the time, if you get my uh, yeah. my meaning. And what I most like about him, did you see him when he walked off the pitch tonight? I'm Seven hat tricks. Seven hat tricks. Yeah. Incredible. In the Champions League alone. Yes, exactly. um, when he walked off the pitch tonight after mm. scoring yet another hat trick, yeah. he had a twinkle in his eye. Yes. So he knew what he'd done. Yeah. He knew that the appreciation of the crowd was all his. Yes. He knew he was centre stage. He again. loves it. And he loves all that. Exactly. And he, and he actually loved being there and loved accepting the acknowledgement of his greatness from the mm. crowd and sort of winked at everybody and yeah. said, thanks a lot. This and is do what, you not think this is as where well I believe. That, that, so this is comparing, where I belong, sorry. comparing him to, say, mm. Lionel Messi, mm. who you have to say uh, has, his brand has been somewhat tarnished yeah. over the last two yeah. seasons yes, or it has. so. it has. I don't know why it's been tarnished, but I it don't. sort of has been. But getting himself sent off, four match bans, yeah. uh, falling out with people, yeah. being a little bit unsure about his future, yeah. whereas Ronaldo shows only optimism yeah. about his future well, and optimism does, about himself. Well, what Ronaldo does, you, know, you see him not so much with yeah. Real Madrid, where he doesn't need to do it, with Portugal, yeah. where he picks Portugal up almost by the scruff of the neck, he gets them to win the European Championships, the European right? Champions, Even yeah. though he gets sent off, he stands mm. on the sidelines, mm. he pushes the manager out of the way. He wasn't sent off, was he? Uh, he had to no, he, taken he was off. taken off, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, exactly. he's, yeah. he's pushing the manager yes. out of the way. He's making yes. all the, you know, the signs on the side. You know, he is single-handedly mm. making that possible for them to win. I, 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 I Messi totally... can't do that for Argentina, who are a much better team. I totally agree. He's the sort of guy, right, if he went into politics, he would make a great prime minister. He would. And I could see him doing that in Portugal, because yeah. you've got to remember... he or wants... a president, maybe. A, El Presidente. A, a, a Presidente, that's right. I mean, he wants to be centre stage for the rest of his life. Now, he may well end up as El Presidente of Real Madrid, yeah. or he may end up as El Presidente of the nation that he was born. I mean, Portugal, for example, he could era. never be part of a group of two people called the two Ronaldos. No, you couldn't. He couldn't do a, a radio show no, with no. another guy called Ronaldo. No, he couldn't. And say, I'm also one of the two Ronaldos. No, he couldn't. He's he couldn't unique. He's unique. Yeah. And the meaning of unique is you can't be nearly unique. You no. can't be absolutely unique. Exactly. You can just be unique. Either unique or not. Or unique or not. So that's the Ronaldo situation. Anybody who wants to give us a call and tell us about their admiration for Ronaldo, why I would you happily want, Why do you want take... people to ring up and well, give us their admiration? Well, because I want them to reinforce my view about uh, the boy that yeah. He is probably the greatest ever, certainly the most charismatic ever, and has brought something to football which nobody else has, and has now given millions of children all over the world. Millions of children. Yes, yes, a Not huge. Not to say women. A huge godlike and some figure men as well. A huge godlike figure yeah. to look up to and yes. to say, truly. This man deserved a statue. It's only a pity the statue was so bad when they made it. Uh -huh. Let's make another one. Well, know? how about this? I mean, you've been uh, completely proved wrong by Alessandro, who yeah. says there's only one Ronaldo, and it's the Brazilian one. He's referring to the previous Ronaldo. Is he referring to Goofy? Uh, yeah, well, Goofy yeah. is a rather unkind way of referring to well, well, what some people call the fat Ronaldo. Yeah, yeah uh, that's right, the, the fat guy Ronaldo, who, uh, yeah. The guy who was unable to perform in the World Cup final yes. after having had possibly uh, a, a panic mixture attack of, in well, the uh, dressing panic, room. Well, either a panic attack or a mixture of some strange um, uh, drugs that were given no, to we him. No, we mustn't get into that territory. I well, believe it to have been a panic well, attack. Well, he may have had a panic attack, but he was given drugs as a result of a panic attack to try and get him back on the pitch. Actually, But then uh, he couldn't play, could he? 
Goofy was Ronaldinho, goofy. wasn't he? Well, go- well, he was also Goofy. No, no, no. But, but the original Ronaldo was also Goofy. No, 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 but I think Fat Ronaldo is a better description of uh, Fat Ronaldo. Goofy, I can't believe that this is Ronaldinho. This is you know, I've tried to start and this show. And the real show. Ronaldo, yeah. Excuse me, I've tried mm. to start this show mm. with a sort of a, a, an honorarium to a man who is, you I know, think, I think it was me very, who very... leapt in and said, look, let's start no. praising Ronaldo. No, no, no. I think you only no, mentioned his no, seven hat tricks. No, I'm trying which to is say. just a statistic. I'm trying to say that this is a man who is at the peak of his physical, you know, fitness. So am I. Who has sacrificed everything for his own bodily sort of, you know, temple. There's also You're a bit of telling the old, me about yeah. people who are fat Ronaldo, yeah. goofy yeah. Ronaldo. It's not really Isn't the there spirit also in which I'm a bit at. of the old metrosexual about Ronaldo? What? The metrosexual. What do you mean by that? I'm not sure really, but it's an You're expression sure. I heard which relates to people are who you are. saying he's a gay icon? Uh, well, I think he is a gay icon, really? isn't he? Well, I don't know. I'm not in the gay community, but I, I th- I th- I th- I'm told that he could be. I don't know. Who tells but, you that? Uh, people tell me when I... I mean, all this thing about him sort of putting cream on his skin to take all what? the all the uh, hair off his body and all this kind what, of stuff. What, you mean like the depilatory type uh, materials? Well, I wouldn't go that far, I mean, for goodness sake. Now, the other thing that we're going to get into during yes. the course of the we show... we've got lots to talk about. Yeah, the other thing we're going to get into is, yes. if David Moyes is listening, Davy, I beg of you, do he's... not leave Sunderland. No, listen, Do David not leave Moyes, Sunderland. I know that he's it a good friend of yours. It would be professional suicide. I know that he's a good friend of yours, mm. and I know that in the past you have stood by him. Yes. And I know that in the past that you have been close to him as yes. the Everton manager. That's right. And the biggest mistake, in my view, that David Moyes ever made mm. was to leave Everton. Yeah. Not only to leave Everton, but to leave Everton in the way that he left Everton. And you both and I know mm. that he left in a, in a, in a way that was uh, un- unpleasant and under well, a bit of a cloud. It wasn't unpleasant. It was, it was clumsy. It was, a, it was a clumsy well, arrangement at the end. It yes. wasn't unpleasant. But what well, I, let's say it could have been done better. It could have been done better. Yeah. But then again, he was leaving for the biggest job in world football, manager of Manchester United yeah, Football which he, Club. Which he couldn't do. And, and it's sometimes hard to handle that. Which how, he couldn't do. How, however, well, I'm get to that in a minute what i'm what i'm saying is here is that any commentator within football and martin samuel is one of my favorite commentators in football uh-huh. and he this week has written and so have others including our very own tony cascarino um who of course broadcasts on talk sport but also writes for the thunderer the which is the world's most uh he does influential and actually, you know what tony cascarino for me mm. is one of the most i would say astute, um, astute yeah and observers um, and and very very sharp observers of football yes. in this world that's right and what they both say is they both say that look hang on you know, he's gone to Sunderland, uh, maybe it's not his fault, but it hasn't been a resounding success. And if you walk out on that, there are going to be very few other Premier League chairmen who are going to say, Davey Moyes yeah. would now be a good bet. Well, so, Davey, I implore you, I implore you, I know you have taken my advice in the past, so I am saying to you, stick with it. Go back to Sunderland next season, get them back into the Premier League. They're a no, very big club. That's not going to happen. And their resources no. in the Championship Incorrect. will be enough no. for you to be able to get them no. back. Do you know what his mistake was? And this is why I made him a villain yesterday. For him to say, mm. in a terribly pompous way, when asked, mm. will you be staying with Sunderland mm. through the next season? Mm. He said it's too early to say, yeah. i.e., yeah. I haven't decided if I want to go down the plug hole with this team, mm. even though I've taken them down the plug hole, yes. because I'm too good for that, yes. because I'm too smart for that, too because smart. I used to manage Manchester United, don't you know? Smart and I used to have fair. a very very good re- record when I was manager of Everton, mm. and just because Sunderland yeah, have let yeah, me down, yeah. don't you make the mistake of thinking that I'm a, a useless manager mm. and that I should be gotten rid of? Yeah. I think David Moyes is a bit of a disgrace, and I think he needs to kind of learn a little bit more about himself, mm. a bit about humility, mm. and a bit about actually recovering something that he's lost. He was always a very humble man when I knew him. Well, he's lost that. By the way, what do you think of the Coast Guard services? Those pictures today of them mm. rescuing that boy well, who we was spoke 13 about miles this yesterday, out to yeah. sea. But I, I, I actually saw a guy called Cap Drew Andrew Pilliner. Who? Captain Andrew Pilliner. Pilliner. Coast Guard search and rescue Did boss, you? right? And he had an HM Coast Guard <laughs> helicopter. It's amazing you've remembered his name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He had an HM Coast what a Guard. Sort of amazing um, uh, power of recognition you've got. He had an HM Coast Guard helicopter behind him as he? he was speaking, yeah. red and white, yes. a fantastic beat really? of a machine. Don't and you think that firing this... up the hang on. firing up hang the on. chopper? No, hang on. Mm? These are the people that you say normally yeah. are wasting public money. No, I don't. Going after half bakes and idiots no, no. who go out on uh, sort of excursions and need to be rescued. That's oh, no, what no, I was no. worrying about. No, I have huge admiration for the Coast Guard people. Oh, the yeah. people who I have question marks over are... Well, what about this half bait from Glasgow? Well, exactly. Getting onto a surfboard well, so now and going 30 well, miles so out. So now you're going to have a go at him, are you? I'm not having a go at him. Do you know why? Why? Because I've been studying the philosophy of surfboarding. Do you know what it's all about? What's it about? It's about solitude. Is it? Solitude yeah, is what surfboarding... Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. Yeah, well, you should do it then. That's what that's what surfboarders you like. Do it. That's what surfboarders mm. like. They like to go out on their own. There is something about surfboarding yeah. because I know all this from Sennan Cove. Surfing. Sennan Cove, right? Sennan Cove. Time. 
What about the time? It's time. To yeah, stop but this talking. is so interesting. People will want to let no, hear this. No. Sun and Cove is down near St Ives in Cornwall, just round the corner actually from Land's End. Oh yeah. And it's the top um, surfboarding centre of this country. Surfing. And hmm. and just look. Well, just you don't hear up. the Beach uh, Boys go. Yeah. Let's all go surfboarding, surfboarding yeah, safari, yeah, yeah, surfboarding yeah, yeah. safari anyway, with me. Anyway, the point I'm making is is that I studied the philosophy of that when I was last down there, and it is all about the isolation of the ocean. Really? Yeah, and getting out there. Right. And, Why don't you and, get out there and give us all a bit of peace? I don't know what's wrong with you tonight. This is talk I, re- sport. I really don't. <laughs> Something wrong. With you. We are the two mites. John says this. Mike Perry's in no position to call Ronaldo Fat Ronaldo. Mm. Hashtag plank. Uh, Hang BM- on. I was not a professional footballer. Therefore, I did not have to keep my <laughs> body as trim as Fat Ronaldo yeah, thank God for that. at that age. <laughs> and also, how about this one from BMW? Goofy Fat Ronaldo. It's no wonder Mike Perry was stuck in the gutter press. Hashtag <laughs> plank. I mean, well, that's, that's your, that's your nice. description of some very, very famous footballers. Yes. You know, it results to sort of, you know, complete and utter horribleness and nastiness. Larry says, yes. MG, Messi hasn't recovered from the recent tax scandal mm. where he and his dad got stung for many millions of euros. Mm. That has hit hard. Well, I'm sorry, we don't care about that. Well, we do. In no, the, we in don't. The, well, we do in the sense no, that... You must play football yes, yes. without any regard for what is going on in the rest of your life. Well, you can't. Well, you can. You can't. Because are you don't telling you me? Are you telling me that when you get sort of, you know, plagued by some kind of horrendous problem that you get from the Egyptian doctor yeah. one day, yes. you can't come in here and do a good show? Well, I've got very good mental strength. Have you? I've got, uh, <laughs> I've got the ability to... Thank God for that. ...compartmentalise my mind. Yes. And uh, when it's compartmentalised... How I many don't, compartments I don't, has your mind got? Uh, up to 10 or 12 at a time. Really? And uh, I don't let something that's bubbling under in one compartment spill over the wall into the next. Do you yeah. see what I mean? OK. Not everybody is able to do that. Not everybody's got a strict discipline of mm. their own um, intelligence. I've, I've found that my discipline is very, very much at the peak at the moment. And... Uh, of probably any time in my life. Really? Yeah. Who told you that? Yeah. No, I just feel that way. <laughs> well, I, feel yeah. well, as though, I feel as though I'm absolutely at the peak of my conditioning. But you know what that is? What is that? It's your withdrawal from tobacco. You've well, become a very strange person. Well, you say and, that. And, uh, you know, you, see, you go storming you around. Me, sort of... You offer me no support mm. at all. All you do yeah. is pick holes in how my behaviour has changed. Well, you don't no, say, no. Mike, it's really tremendous that you've given up smoking. No, I'm trying to guide you. I'm all you do is you. tell me that I've become some kind of maniac. No, no, I'm trying to guide you. Look, if you become offensive to people around you, it doesn't bother me because it's like water off a duck's back yes, to me. Yes, that's right. I've known you a long but time. But luckily I haven't become offensive. But other people might think, who is this ogre that uh, we've suddenly inherited in the office, you yes. know, who's sort of um, stomping around, issuing instructions yeah. and deriding a lot of people. Well, I noticed that you're heavily critical of a lot well, of people these days. The thing you know? is that what I have people done... People who you've, who you've simmered with, yeah. you know, with with disapproval of in the you past see, you see, the are thing now that's enraging happened. you. Well, no, the, see, the thing that's happened in the past is that yes. I've actually been disguising my true nature Nature. Oh, yeah, because I Because my yeah. true nature was mm. to be quite harsh with people. But, you know, yes. because I thought, well, here we are, we're in the new sort of, you know, era, and yep. we shouldn't really be too hard on people. We should mm-hmm. give them the benefit of the doubt. Mm. You know, let's all be kind of, you know, hell fellow well met about yes. everything. I'm actually reverting back to the way I used to be, I think, mm. rather than actually changing. The way you used to be? The way I used to be when I was running newspapers, yeah. Yeah, yeah? Yeah, when we were all a little bit more bully, oh, so... when we were all a bit more nasty. I mean, you no, know. I, I wasn't. No. Yes, you were. So... I can produce any number of people who will tell me yeah. and will tell the rest of the world how yeah. miserable their lives were, thanks to you. So you're really saying that after your newspaper career just crumbled into It didn't ashes, crumble, no. And you had to get out of there, no. right? You had to get out of there. No. And, uh, 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 and then what happened was it took you a few years to build your career in sort of broadcast media. No, not really. Then I came along and helped you to accelerate it. Oh, well, you came along and helped me to uh, accelerate it, then yeah, I completely yeah. utterly kiboshed it by resigning. Uh, no, I didn't resign, yeah, actually. Did. No, 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 I didn't. I took a strategic uh, career decision. Yes. And uh, you could have been part of it, but, you know, you chose to oh, just I could have resigned on. as well. You, could have, you just drifted no, on. No, instead I went old... off and, and ran the world's most successful overnight show. But that's down, another story. Uh, down the Swanee. Now, let's listen. talk to Michael, who's an Arsenal fan, yeah, because he wants that. to say something about Ronaldo. Michael, Excellent. a very good morning to you. Do you, Hello, do you, do you, do you agree like with... Uh, I've listened to you two for years. Yeah, that's good. Mike Graham, like, he's been doing it longer, isn't he? But, um, yeah, like, Ronaldo's definitely the best player ever. Like, yes, he's is he? Messy, but he's overtaken him, isn't he? He's definitely... Yeah, but, I... Th- um, 
Yeah, go on. Yeah, no, I was going to say... Hang on, I, hang on, Michael, you rang us. Yes, he's don't, one of the... He's don't one of, pause to let oh, Paul you speak, otherwise on. you'll never get another word in. <laughs> Michael, he's, he's <laughs> one of the world's great players <laughs> ever, but he's also the most charismatic, is he not? Yeah, he's got so much about him, but when, I, mm. when you think back to the olden day players, they all look the same when they run, like... Mm. I, like, I follow a lot of olden day players as well, like all the great players, like. But they all look the same when they're running, like they all look in their forties as well. Maybe some of them were in their forties, mm-hmm. but you, you put Eden Hazard back in an eighties team or sixties team, you know, it run rings round them, wouldn't it? <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, who's going to yeah. run rings round them? What are you talking about? When you look at olden day football on ITV4, yes, yeah. <laughs> when they play the old matches back, yes, they all look like they run the same, they do the same, they, they, they all look similar with the beards and the long hair, but that's just the look in them, though, isn't it? But I always think to myself, Cole, you stick Eden Hazard in this team, mm-hmm. and uh, you watch how they play then. Yeah, what well, about, what about, have you ever watched Johan Cruyff play? Yeah, the Cruyff turned famous, he did once, wasn't it? Well, hang on, no, no, what, you're going to diss Johan Cruyff? Johan Cruyff used to walk around people, right? He didn't actually have to run past them, he didn't have to pass yeah, the my, ball, he just walked around them. My theory is, olden day footballers didn't really defend that much with their cigarettes at half-time and all that. I think nowadays, defending's a lot more... Well, I say yeah. that. Yeah. Well, listen, you know, you know what I think the problem for you, Michael. Michael, you know what the problem for you is, I think, is that you've been watching Arsenal for so long that you've actually Nothing forgotten, what, fo- you've forgotten what football's about, mate. No, Michael, well, I think you're living in the past, mate. I think the idea of, you know, um, players smoking at half-time and all that, that's going back 50 years. That's Jimmy Greaves' era, and that era's over. Ronaldo's just about to overtake Jimmy Greaves as record yeah, scorer in Europe. Record for his record, and no one's ever, ever, ever going to be that record in my lifetime and anybody's lifetime. What, Jimmy Green's uh, record? No, 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 I'm talking about Ronaldo now. Ronaldo, Messi. But what's changed in it? All right, the pitches have changed. Well, I know. mean, which record are you talking about they're not going to break? Mm. Which, which one? Ronaldo's record. Well, he hasn't got a record God, yet. What, right. fat Ronaldo, you mean? No, Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo and Messi, no one will ever break them records. Well, they both, they both got, hang on, they both got seven hat-tricks, mm. right, in the Champions League. Yeah. So, so one of them, one of them, one of them will break that record. Also, 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 no one picks up on this. Pele, it's beat both of them. Why don't people mention? I watched the Pele film. Yet. He's bad and same goals, three World Cup. Yeah, but he scored them all in South America against some teams who were so poor that they wouldn't get into the English National League. So there's question marks over that one. See, I didn't know that, but I just take on Facebook like a thousand goals, you know, and you read that and you think to yourself. Messi scored, what is it, 800, something like that? Yeah. But I think Messi's better than Ronaldo, definitely. But no way. On what basis? On what basis do you say that, Sir Michael? Mm. Dribbling, going past Dribbling. players, finishing better. Come on. But Ronaldo, late, look, look, come on, there's only like fucking... There's only like... Sorry, there's only like no, a little sake. bit between them in goals. Well, here's the problem, right? Barcelona, yeah. thanks to Lionel Messi, are no longer in the Champions League, Right. Thanks to Messi. How can you say that? Thanks to the well, manager. Because Thanks Messi is meant to... Well, hang on. If you are supposed to be the best player in the world, right, you're yeah. going to tell me that you can't play 180 minutes and not score against Juventus or any other so team? he's had a bad season. Oh, so he's, he's had, had a bad, bad season. season. Oh, mean? right. But hang on. I thought he was the best player in the world. Yeah, he's the best player. He's well, to, to Ronaldo at the moment, but he's still the second best player no, in the world. I think Mike Parry, Mike Parry said it right. I don't often mm. agree with him, but when mm. he said that Cristiano Ronaldo is the best player in the world, yeah. I don't think anyone yeah, can argue. Yeah, nobody, oh, yeah. nobody can argue on that, Michael. But, Michael, thank you very much for yeah. calling us. And I think poor old Michael is suffering from what many Arsenal fans are suffering from, yeah. which is called, technically, Ozil Sanchez-itis. Well, I mean... The Watching o- players that cost an awful lot of money doing yeah. nothing. I don't understand the Ozil situation. I was looking at that today. Yeah. So, Ozil is being accused of not trying hard enough. Right. And yet the club are moaning that he won't put pen to paper on a much improved contract yes. of up to two hundred and forty thousand a week. That's right. I don't see how the two facts can can well, uh, exist in the same right. argument. Well, I think the two facts exist in the same argument because the fans expect him to try harder in order to get them to offer him the better deal. Yeah. Because if you're being offered a better deal, surely you would do the best you can yeah. to prove that you are the best player in the world. Yeah. But the general opinion is that he's idle and not trying hard enough for Arsenal. What's your opinion of him? Uh, my opinion of him is that he should leave because, frankly, I think he's got an overinflated opinion of himself. And to me, he is indicative of the problems that Arsenal have. And that is that when you've got a player who's not even trying as hard as he can, yes. according to most experts, yeah. but he's still wanted by the club. Well, you saw the game the other day, right? Yes. The North London derby. Yes. Did, uh, did, did he do anything at all? 
Um, to merit uh, what would be likely a, a well, new pay rise of something like 220 percent. Yeah, I mean, we all watch so many games that you watch, you, you, you remember the crucial moments in a game, right. like the overhead kick, you yes. know, the uh, Liverpool player. The one that you said that anybody could do. Well, I didn't... By I, the I, way, I, since then, yeah. everyone has called it the goal of the season. Well, some people are calling no, it that. No, everyone is. But, yeah, but I mean, people say that because they get excited, don't they, about an unconventional well, what goal. they're not saying is that anybody but, can uh, do it. I haven't seen anything that Ozil's done this season, no. which has actually made me say, whoa, he's worth 240 well, honest, grand a week. To be honest, eh? the, the thing that he's done which has made the most impact on anyone yes. is leaving the marks of his studs in the dressing room door uh, yeah. uh, that he kicked in after they asked him to take a drug test it's after the right. London derby. It is right. How about this from G. Shaw? It says, just waiting for Porky to break into everybody's goal and surfboarding, which is, of course, not no, the words of a Beach Boys well, song. Well, they could do. Yeah. Let's go surfboarding now. <laughs> Everybody surfboarding now. Come surfboarding with me. Yeah. Da, 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 da. How about it going to a surfboarding school? <laughs> yeah, that's, this is talk sport. That's right. Surfboards up. We are the two mics. Matt says this. Hi, Mike. He said, could you please give my two-day-old son, Oscar Skeet, uh, a £10 welcome to the world, uh, your second biggest fan after me. Imagine that. A guy called Oscar Skeet, yeah. uh, who is just two days old, right. is already a two mics fan. Well, he wants 10 quid. He doesn't want 10 quid, no. This is a, that appalling offer that you once made to oh. say that anyone who wants to get a shout-out should offer to Oh, I see. Right, OK. Yeah, send the tenner. Some people, some people yeah, yeah. actually took it seriously and yeah. thought that they'd have to yeah. send in a tenner no. in order to get the shout-out. No, it's OK. I don't want a £10. Is it a oh, two-day-old well, child, is it? Two days old, Oscar. Uh, his name's Oscar. That's name's a great Oscar. name. OK, well, listen, I want to say, Oscar, you're a wonderful little boy and you're going to have a great life in front of you. You must only... Accord to the views and the wills of your mum and dad. Is that, is that right? the best people to bring you up? Well, Matt hasn't mentioned his mum, so let's hope that that's not a problem for you. Well, he must say. have a mother because he was only born two days ago. Well, Babies are born to, sometimes, uh, to mothers. Sometimes these things are complicated. BMW says this mm. If the problems are messier due to the tax man, imagine the meltdown Mike Parry would disappear into when they catch up with him. Well, I'm sorry. My taxes are absolutely. Uh, vehemently examined, re-examined, and paid yeah. in massive amounts right. on we, a regular uh, make basis. Sure we're this, please. Sorry, we make sure we're recording this. Yeah, yeah, this. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This Go message off, timed one thirty-two a.m. Yeah. Uh, on Wednesday, uh, May the third. Uh, do you know what sort of property taxes are being having are being demanded less. by the government? Well, people these like days. you, people like yeah. you that own more property than they need should be taxed at a very, very high rate. Uh, I'm, very, I'm all in favour of that. You see, that's... Uh, I'm all in favour of that's it. That's the voice of the loser no, in no, life. That's not a, at all. That's the voice of the scumbag. No, not at all. You know, I no, thought... You only mm, need to pay taxes mm. at a reasonable level on property that yeah. you need to live in, right? Yeah. If you wish to have property which you seek to make profit from, you should be taxed you, to the highest degree, as far as I'm concerned. You are typical of the tale I was told when I was a child uh, by yeah. those who put me on the road, the right road in life. And, and that was they? this... And they said, what happens in life is this. In America, mm. when a boy, when a poor boy in ragged clothes... Who were these people? These people are... these sort of ta- characters as a Mormon? No, 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 Staggering no, no, by no, no, Birkenhead no, no. one day. What they said is, in America, yeah. when a boy in ragged clothes is standing yeah. on a corner and a Cadillac goes by, that boy says to himself... One of these days, I'm going to have a Cadillac. Yeah. But in England, yeah. when a boy in ragged clothes mm. stands on a street corner yeah. and he sees a Rolls Royce go by, yeah. he says, I can't afford a Rolls Royce. I'm going to make blinking sure you don't get one in future. I'm taking it off you. Oh, yeah. And that is the difference in attitude. Why are you taking, between, uh, why are you taking the Mickey out working be, class be, people in this country? I'm not. Between those who say... Well, why do you go and live in America? Life. I did live in America for a while. Yeah, but you couldn't hack it there, so you came back here. I could hack it perfectly no, well, mate, but I miss Coronation Street, English beer and fish and chips. Well, you could watch Coronation so, Street in America. And, well, you I could couldn't get in my day. Couldn't yeah, in could. my day. Yes, you could. No, you couldn't. You could have got it on Channel 13. No, you couldn't. PBS, no, trust no, me. No. Um, now, listen, I want to say something You're serious for a minute. smart enough to work the television. No, no, I'm, I want to say something serious for a minute. Right. Now, um, Oren Lennon, who is an Everton player, yes. has very sadly been detained under the Mental Health Act. Yes, uh, I've seen through, that on the back of the papers welfare. this morning. I want to extend my best wishes to Oren Lennon. Yes. He's a professional footballer. They have stresses and problems in life like everybody else, and the poor lad now has found himself in a bit of a dark place by the look of it. Uh-huh. So I want to send him my best wishes. And, Indeed. Uh, 
and I'm sure you will the join me in that. Speedy recovery. She'll join me in that. Speedy yes. recovery. And I am certain that uh, Everton Football Club, who have a uh, great reputation for the care of their uh, their staff, their players and their former players, will look after him. Aaron, get well soon, my yes, boy. Yes, absolutely right. Luxury Lizzie says, I yep. admire MG and I think it's great you've stopped smoking. I wish I could. Mm. Forget about Mike Parry. Mm. Loads of us think that it is great. Thank you, Lizzie. Oh, that's, that's very, a very nice. nice thing that's to very say. nice. Yeah. One minute she sends me messages saying, you know, she admires uh, the position I take in life, the stance really? I take in life, and well, all that. You were lying down. No, 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 no. You. Idiot. Why, why can't you admire her for saying something nice about me? Well, uh, yes, at, at my expense, though. Uh, She's saying ignore, ignore. Well, because you're Mike very, Parry. because you're not very uh, encouraging, shall we say? I am very my, encouraging uh, to everybody. About my struggle. Right now, uh, my daily, daily struggle? Struggle. My what struggle? struggle. My struggle. My struggle to give up the foul weed. Yeah, but if you hadn't, at the age of fourteen, decided to stuff, you know, cigarettes in your mouth and set fire to them from an early mm. age to like find you, out what like experience you, like you was about, do, like you didn't do that. I never did. Really? I never smoked a cigarette until I was twenty-four years of age. Is that right? Yeah, the yeah. first one. There's ever. lots of pictures of you with cigarettes in your hand. Yeah. But they're all props, aren't they, for right. our, for our um, publicity posts? No, you I'm know talking about the one. Well, there's one that was published only the other day of you next to um, the Prince of Darkness with a cigarette in your hand. No, it's not. Yeah, there is. No. Yes. Everybody's seen it. Definitely not. I Everybody's didn't have a cigarette in mine in that picture. You've got a cigarette in your no, hand. No, that was at some leaving party yep. in the Daily the old Daily And you Express have a cigarette building. in your hand. I don't, because you weren't allowed to smoke in the building. Well, you have a cigarette so in your hand. Me. Now, I don't think we've spoken enough about poor Davy Moyes, who you're lambasting You call him poor Davy Moyes. Yeah. First of all, he's very wealthy, Davy Moyes. He's well, got he about is. seven million for leaving Man United. I think it's four and a half, actually. Failed miserably mm. there. He took seven million out of the club, including the payment that he got while he was there. Yes, And including the payment he got when he left. Okay. Yes, yes. He then went to a Real Sociedad, where he failed. Failed miserably. Well, he didn't and, uh, fail miserably. Of course he did. He didn't win the uh, the La Liga, well, but no, he, they fired he didn't him. take him down. Well, he didn't take him down. I because... don't think he did fire him, actually. I think you will be careful about that. I think he... he oh, uh... you think he left of his own volition? Well, I think they left on by mutual agreement. Really? Yes. Well, let's, yes. let's put it this way. Yes. You know, they're doing a lot better now since he went away, right? Since you oh, went I think, away. Where are they in the La Liga They're up in the top half, which is what the, where they were not when he was managing them. Is that right? It is absolutely right. Do you know exactly what position they're oh, in? I would the say they're half? around about eighth or ninth. Eighth or ninth. Do you want me to double check it for you? No. You see, the trouble um, with you is, is that mm. you're incapable of keeping your eye on these things. No, right? no, no. I he do. is unlike your mate Tony Adams, yes. who has managed to get Granada relegated, yeah. right? Um, in four games, that was something, wasn't in it? In four right? games, yeah. yeah. 0 for 4, yeah. as they say, right? Uh, so. David Moyes then leaves there, comes mm. back, says to everybody at Sunderland, mm. I'm going to take this job and it's going to be a relegation battle. Yes. And what all the Sunderland fans said, as I told you yesterday, is that there was no battle. Mm. He did not prepare these players for battle in any way, shape or form. Mm. And they went down as fast as you like because well, they had no ability to kind of stop it. You know? I, I, to be honest, I think the resources he was given to try and stop no, the, don't give the rot that. were, were rubbish. pretty uh, poverty stricken. No, that is rubbish. But anyway, look, I would advise Dave, if he's listening, because I know he listens a lot to uh, to all sorts of things, I would say don't leave Sunderland. It's it it is now. Uh, in fact, it's a great opportunity. Oh, look, Real Sociedad are now in seventh yeah. place. Yeah, you said eighth or ninth. I said eighth or ninth, but they've obviously moved up since I last checked. See, once again, they're in done, seventh don't place. Know what you're talking about uh, above uh, Ibar mm. and just mm. below Atletico Bilbao, right. uh, Villarreal, Sevilla, Atletico Madrid, Real mm. Madrid, and Barcelona. So they're yeah. actually doing rather well. Doing rather so well. since David Moyes left them, mm. they've actually gone absolutely rocketing up the table. This should be an opportunity for Davey Moyes. He should say to himself, right, now then, I've got a chance right. to restore my reputation. I'm going to get them right up to the top of the championship, make them champions, take no, them back up. No, he won't up, do it. Take them back up into the Premier League in glory. I bet you and any then, money, he won't do it. And then do you know why? Because he's too full of his own pride, and pride comes before a fall. He thinks he's too good for the championship. And then if he chooses to move on, uh, having taken a team back into the Premier League, a bit like the position Rafa's in at the moment, then that's the way he should do it, in my view. Really? OK. So what yes. advice have you got for him other than just to hang around and wait and make a fool of himself massively? Eh? You're asking him to make a massive fool of himself. No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. No, I'm not. You're telling him to go down with Sunderland... And bring yeah, them yeah, back yeah. up. And bring them back up. That's not making but a fool of yourself. Yes, it will make it's a fool not. of himself if it doesn't happen. It is not, no. No, believe me, believe me, I know these things. No, so you don't. I do, I do know these things. I do know these things. I know these things about everything, so I wouldn't worry about it, OK? Yeah. How about yeah. this one from uh, somebody called Steve Owen Livingston? Yes. He says, hi, Porky. Uh, Mike, ever tell you about the dodgepot competition he presided over when he was at Talk 107? Criminal charges should have ensued. Now, Steve-O, I don't know what you mean by that, yeah. uh, but I suspect Criminal charges, that you eh? don't know what you're talking about. Yes. And if you make those kind of allegations live on national and international radio, yes. uh, you should be prepared to back them up. Ooh. So I'll be making a call to you uh, very shortly, mm. and my lawyers will be involved as well. 
Um, we'll find out precisely what you mean by that. You may have to retract it uh, before the morning comes. But you could have avoided all that by just not reading that message out. Yeah, no, because I'm you not... not read that message out? Well, because I'm not having people making allegations about me well, then on, now... on, on, you know, on, uh, on social media sites well, where people can see them. Well, those allegations... And if you ignore them, yes. it would appear that as if they, yes. uh, they have some merit. This has no merit at all. Oh, Steve Owen Livingston knows absolutely it has no merit. I... So I'm expecting Steve Owen yeah. to apologise yeah, yeah. before uh, two o'clock. If he doesn't, uh, let's hell hath no fury... Yeah. Uh, and it will all come down on his head. Oh, I think you're getting a bit oversensitive here, aren't Don't you? Think so. Not hey? at all. A bit oversensitive. Now, how about this from James? Yes. Messi is the best in the world. End of. Yes. Ronaldo was embarrassed by Messi in El Clasico. Mm. Well, that's mm. nonsense because mm. the last El Clasico, which took place what two or three weeks ago, yeah. uh, in which uh, Messi scored a fantastic winning goal mm-hmm. uh, in the final minutes of the game, yes, still leads Barcelona probably finishing in second place in La Liga. Yeah, well. So in the end, of course yeah. Messi's a great player. Nobody's saying he's not. No. Nope. But in the end, mm. if Ronaldo mm. ends up winning two back-to-back Champions Leagues, yes. which nobody has ever done, nope. uh, winning the league which again Which I keep pointing Spain, out to you. Which as you keep pointing passed out. you by. No, it hasn't passed me by. I'm yeah. quite happy to, to salute you for that. And if that does happen, yeah. then I'm sure, I'm sorry, Messi mm. has gone into um, a sort of retirement. Really. How long ago is it since I said, uh, I believe that um, Real Madrid will retain the Champions League? Uh, I told you at the what? start of the season, I told you at the start of the season no, they were going to win it, didn't no, I? No, you did not. Yes, I did. Absolute rubbish. You, what, you're, what you've said mm. over the course of time mm. is that if they do it, they will be the first team to have ever done it. Really? You have never said that they're going to do it. Oh, I did. I did, honestly. Oh, you're I said going to say the start that of the now. season. No, I, I well, didn't I actually start don't the season. think you're right. I think Juventus mm. will win the Champions League mm. this year. How about that? You told me yesterday that I'm apparently a, cent- a fence sitter, that I'm always sitting on the fence. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you right now, yeah. Juventus are going to win the Champions League. OK, well, you've said that. It's a statement. We'll see how it works out. Right. How does that play with your sort of nonsense about how I never make any statements about uh, putting my, uh, my sort well, of beliefs out there on the, on the fence? Because I've simply shamed you into having to do it. No, you haven't. Oh, yes, I have. You are unbelievable. Oh, no, I have. You I've shamed you into having to do it. It says here, Davy Moyes, right, I'm needing uh, an updated report on the situation because I'm keeping a uh, minute-to-minute guy guidance on this. Oh, yeah. If he does leave, he would miss out on a payoff if he resigns. He Baby Moyes. Yeah. Uh, he feels he did not get a chance to sign the players he wanted but is also willing to take his share of the responsibility. Despite he and his staff looking at players for the championship next season, his attitude has altered in recent weeks. The reaction of fans who have turned on him is a factor, but there are over his slap remark to a female BBC reporter has not played any part, although he may yet be punished for it by an FA. Well, that didn't help him, to be honest. That made him look like a bit of a dinosaur, didn't it? Well, it, it, it was... It didn't look good. I totally agree with you, and it was an extra pressure he didn't need in yeah. a situation that was so difficult in trying to deal with the team. He didn't need a distraction, did right. he? Well, yeah. it's like a lot of things, you know. If everything's yeah. going well then you can get away with more stuff. If things are not going well, as soon as something small happens, yep. it becomes a problem. Now, by contrast, yes. I'm being told that old Paul Clement, yes. right, uh, will probably stay the Swansea even if they go down. Let me ask you a question. Yes. If Paul Clement does not keep Swansea up, yes. was there any point in sacking Bobcat Bob? Uh, well, you might as well have kept him there. Yeah, I totally agree. And totally I said agree. this to you at the time. I told you mm. if, they, if they bring somebody else in, they won't be able to do anything better do than think, Bobcat um, Bob. And they should have kept him there. Do you think if they go down, Swansea, do you think Bobcat Bob might ring up the chairman and when the chairman answers the phone, he'll say, <laughs> I get you now, boy! Well, listen, I wouldn't blame him if he did. <laughs> this is talk sport. Well, we are the two mics. Got loads and loads of tweets coming in. Here's one from Luke in Lincoln. He says, Messi yep. and Ronaldo are the best players the game has ever seen. And we're lucky to see them playing at the same time and against each other. We mm. should take take time comparing and enjoy their talent. Yes. Uh, well, that's fair enough. But, I mean, in the end, in eventually, because mm-hmm. of the nature of the thing that we do, uh, you're going to end up having to say, well, which one is better? And I think for Ronaldo is proving to be better and more kind of... Two um, years ago, people would have said Messi. Yeah, so, exactly. I, so I think they're so close that I think it just depends on what day you're talking about them and what they've done the week before, the night before. You yes, know what exactly I mean? right. Yeah. And here's yeah. one from uh, Becky who says, Sunderland have been awful this season and don't have the players to get out of the championship. Moyes mm. will fail mm. if he stays. Now, let's talk to Mark Donaldson because he left something to say Indeed. about uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, Lionel Messi and, of course, David Moyes. Mark, a very good morning to you. 
Morning, gents. How are you both? Very, Very well. well, thank you. Very well indeed. Great performance by Real Madrid. I mean, oh, the fourth, something special. Uh, the fourth sort of uh, Madrid derby in as many years. Uh, various very you know very high points of the ends of the uh, Champions League. Um, you have to say, you mm. can't really see Atletico coming back from that, can you? Nope, nope, nope. Um, I, I, something happened with Atleti when Diego Simeone, who'd signed an extension to his contract, then retracted part of that extension uh, a few months ago as if to say, uh, well, I know I said I was going to stay long term, but I'm not going to stay as long now because I want to do something else. If that's your manager, are you not thinking as a player, and it depends on how close you are to the manager, are you not thinking, well, wait a minute here, his commitment recently has been phenomenal. And I think the, the performances on the pitch from Atletico Madrid over the last few years have mirrored the commitment shown by the coach. I thought that was a weak Atletico Madrid side who two years ago wouldn't have produced that performance. So for me, they mirrored their coach and his decision to say, I'm going to stay for ages. Oh, well, no, I'm not now. I want to go in a couple of years. I just don't, I didn't see the commitment that I've seen from Atleti. Yeah. On the other hand, Real Madrid were brilliant. Has Simeone mm. overstayed the welcome, do you think? Do you think he should have left a couple of years ago when he had the chance? Well, that's a good question. We'll soon find out because it depends where he goes next. Does he want to go back to Italy? Um, does he want to try the Premier League? I'd love to see him at Arsenal. I really would. I'd love to see someone at Arsenal shake up that club, get the bull by the horns, get them by the scruff of the neck, kick a few backsides. Because right now, I think they're soft, that football club at Arsenal. I think Simeone would be the the perfect uh, fit for them. Has he outstayed his welcome at Atleti? I'm not sure. I think what you'll find with Atletico Madrid, depending on who they get in, I think he's punched above his weight. Um, sorry, I think Atleti under him have punched above their weight. I wouldn't be surprised if Atleti were a, a Europa League team, a good Europa League team going forward without Simeone. I just really wish... Uh, I'd love to see him in the Premier League. I wish he would go to Arsenal, whether it's this summer, which I doubt, or eventually when, when Wenger goes. But from what we're told, Thomas Tuchel is, uh, is someone that Arsenal have a keen interest in as well, the guy who's at Dortmund right now. Yeah, Mark, you just made reference there to a manager kicking a load of backsides. I think the last international <laughs> manager who tried that uh, didn't, succeed, didn't succeed too well at Grenada. So <laughs> Grenada. I uh, Grenada. Yeah. I think that's a bit of a for, an unfortunate expression, really. <laughs> But there you go. Um, but you would like to see, would you not, yeah. a vision, and I'm sure a lot of Arsenal fans would like to see this, Diego Simeone mm. with his hand around uh, old uh, Mesut Ozil's throat <laughs> yes. as they're going up yeah. the tunnel at half-time, yeah. just pressing him up against the well, ball going, would you mind scoring a goal, please? That's right. What we were talking about, Mark, earlier, was that you just can't understand the politics of Arsenal at the moment. On the one hand, you've got a general view that Ozil's not trying hard enough, that he's uh, not putting his back into it, not supporting his teammates. And on the other hand, you've got a you know, an internal row going on because he won't sign a new contract for double the money he's getting now to take him to 240000 a week. I mean, doesn't that illustrate just what a mess Arsenal are in at the moment? Yeah, and why should the manager, uh, why should the two players, Ozil and Alexis Sanchez, put pen to paper until they know if Arsene Wenger is staying or going? Now, But why I'm do sure they want him to put pen in... to paper if he's been lambasted by two-thirds of the crowd and half the management team for not putting his back into his job? Could he have done better? Yes, he could. Yeah. That's the bottom line, and that's the frustrating thing, because, Porky, you've seen Mesut Ozil, as have Arsenal fans. You've seen him at his best. What a player he is. I mean, he thinks two, three times quicker than anybody else, and he thinks ahead of the game. He's a wonderful player. If Arsenal players, the squad that they've got middle to front, uh, with Alexis Sanchez up front, not Olivier Giroud, they've got enough talent middle to front to outscore however many they concede. So why is mm. it not happening? Mm. That's why I think they need someone that's going to get them by the scruff of the neck. A bit of tough love is what Arsenal players need. Tough they do, love. and if it's not yeah. going to come from Diego Simeone, who on earth is it going to come from? I mean, that's another story that we could talk about probably all night. Mm. We've been talking as well, of course, about the game tomorrow. Yes. Uh, Monaco versus Juventus. I fancy Juventus to win the whole thing. Yeah, a load I mean, of rubbish. Yeah, well, Porky's jinx has now hit pretty much everybody. <laughs> hit Anthony Joshua, <laughs> uh, hit Vladimir Klitschko, yeah. it bit John Higgins <laughs> on Ray, Sunday night Real in the Madrid. <laughs> You Real know, Madrid. You've got nothing right this weekend. Real nothing. Madrid are going to win the Champions League and become the first team to win it back to back. Do you agree with me or not, Mark? I do. And, and by Thank the way, I, I, have to, I have to say that over the last few weeks and the last couple of months, uh, you haven't changed your mind. You have stuck with them, Thank Porky. You. So, Thank you. Um, I'll, 
That's I'll, not a good I'll give thing. you that, but if you put a cor- curse on them, mm. then it's either Monaco or Juventus <laughs> to win the Champions League if this curse of yours no. is, uh, is a, a, a real thing. No, it is absolutely not. extraordinary. It's Let's not. talk about uh, Sunderland and David Moyes as well, because obviously a fellow mm. countryman of yours, we were up in Scotland recently and people were saying, you know, could David Moyes return to the Scottish Premier League in some way, shape or form? I think the problem with David Moyes is that he's too full of himself. He thinks that he's too good for Sunderland. He thinks he's certainly too good for the uh, Championship. And I don't think he wants to go down there. For me, this is a huge call for David Moyes because right now he's damaged goods. Now, say he leaves Sunderland. If you're a Premier League chairman, either of you two, and Moyes is on the market, are you going to take him? No, no you're not. No, so no he's way. got a choice, OK? Sunderland are going to be one of the bigger teams in the Championship next season. They do well, they'll get a decent attendance. You're talking 40,000, 50,000 at the Stadium of yep. Light. For me, he has a duty to Sunderland uh, and also to his career as well to stay with them. Uh, Rafa Benitez is a more successful coach, but he stayed with Newcastle and got them up. And you can argue that, yes, the two signings he got from Porky's uh, club, Everton, mm. Darren Gibson, Brian Oviedo, haven't really worked out. Yep. I think he spent $7.5 million for them. But I just think with, with David Moyes, if he's going to be damaged goods and he leaves Sunderland, the best he can hope for is another championship club a move abroad, and we've already seen what happened, and that didn't mm. work out. You've got to remember, him and uh, Brendan Rodgers were, went in for the Celtic job. Clearly, Celtic made the, the best decision to get yeah. Brendan Rodgers and not David Moyes. Well, I'm so not sure he, he did. Go if you leave Sunderland, well, hang on, Brendan, no, Brendan I'm, Rodgers I'm is about sure to win the treble, but yeah. only the third time in the history. No, of No, I'm not Celtic. sure David Moyes wanted that job. I'm not sure no, he wanted it. Of course, Mark. he did. No, I'm not sure he did. But anyway, that's uh, that's for another day. I mean, the point is, my view is that he has a responsibility to get him back. I can't see any other Premier League manager now coming for him because although he did a great job at Everton, an old MG here said he well, had to he leave. he did an OK job at Everton. He, he, he didn't he, do anything. He, he Nothing should, happened at Everton. He, he didn't win anything. MG said he should have stayed. It was too long uh, at Everton, 11 years, and he had to move on. Since then, he's been unfortunate in the challenges with which he's been presented because going to Manchester United was a lose-lose situation. Look at, the, look at the teams and look at the, uh, the managers who've been employed. Hull City employed someone that most of us didn't know about, um, Marcus Alon- uh, Marco Alonso. And look what he's done, right? He, he's been excellent as far as, uh, as Hull is concerned. Now, different managers represent different skill sets. You want someone to keep you up. Maybe not the most attractive football, Tony Pulis. Done great with West Brom. And they're now complaining, they're like, oh, yeah, but we're not winning games. They're eighth in the table. I tell you, Sunderland, Middlesbrough and Swansea, Hull, Crystal Palace and West Ham would swap there. You look at someone like Sam Allardyce at Palace. They could still go down, but it's probably unlikely. Again, they've got him to do a job. What stereotype does David Moyes have that a coach, uh, sorry, that a, a chairman of an English Premier League club mm. would say, oh, he's the man from us? I agree with you, Porky. I do not think that you would take that gamble no. and appoint someone like David Moyes. No, no, I, I, I totally agree. And that's Marco why. I, Silva, sorry, Porky. Marco Silva at home, not Marcus Alonso. Yeah, Marco Silva, absolutely right. Um, and the other issue here, which MG keeps uh, hammering on about because he's really a class warrior and has social envy of other people. I'm not a class it, warrior, by that, the imagination. In order for me he, to be a class yeah, warrior, yeah. I would have to consider myself to be in one particular he, uh, class, he's, which I don't. He's very upset and disappointed that Davy Moyes can throw off the yoke of uh, economic misery by pocketing <laughs> £7 million pounds from his stint at Manchester United, whereas MG here struggles to put together 85 quid to buy a bottle of champagne yeah. most weekends. That's you know? because you, uh, you mm. walked out on the apartment that would be worth a million pounds if I had been able to keep it. Yeah. But you, of course, would be betrayed yeah, me yeah. and uh, walked away from it sometime in the uh, late 80s. You can't betray somebody <laughs> who's a half-bake, you know, uh, right. if you've got yourself yeah. to a half-bake as usual, situation. As usual, Porky slithered out on his belly no, no. like he does from if, every if, other if situation I just inter- ever in. interject in, in, in the sibling squabbling, yeah. sure. um, uh, look, there's two sides to every story, right? And if David Moyes mm. stays with Sunderland, mm. gets them up, then he's going to stay with them. Then his damage that he's done by taking them down and over the last few years at Man United and Real Sociedad has mm. kind of been repaired. Oh, it's been so, totally repaired because he's then shown himself to be a guy with the valour, with courage, with determination, strength, loyalty, but most of all, honour. Honour, you're absolutely right, mm. honour, yeah. Yeah. How about this question from Martin, who has tweeted in to the two mics? He says, mm. would you rather have a sparkling new stadium for Everton or sign Cristiano Ronaldo for a guaranteed three years? 
Um, I'd rather have a new stadium, thank you. So you don't want Cristiano Ronaldo? Well, yes, I would like Cristiano Ronaldo, but Cristiano Ronaldo would be a one-man team at Everton. You would have to then go and spend another billion pounds yeah. to get players as good as him around really? him to make it into a team like Real Madrid. Well, things are worse than we thought, then. No, they're not worse than I thought. The team, <laughs> things things <laughs> are absolutely normal at Everton, like most other Premier League really? clubs. Yeah. Yes, A bit of a leaky roof, though, no. as a lot of people were posting at the weekend. Anyway, <laughs> we don't want to talk about that. What about the baseball, uh, Mark? Because Porky's been asking me about uh, the Houston Astros game tonight. They don't seem to be doing too well against the Rangers. Uh, no, and why that particular game, if you don't mind me asking? I mean, they're 2-0 down in the bottom of the third, but yeah. is there any reason? Because the, well, the, Pokey the went to, lost, Pokey... 23-5 to Washington the other day. Why not talk about them? Why the, why the Rangers and the Astros? Well, Porky has a bit of a soft spot for Houston. I can't go too much into any detail, but there's something that happened there when he was <laughs> over there many years ago. Yeah, I can't even remember what it was myself, actually, Mark, yeah. but there you go. I like the Astro <laughs> Turfs. I think they're a, the not a bad team. Yeah, the Astro <laughs> Turfs. Yeah, yeah, they're you all right. You, you, you sound like yeah. there's, a, there's a soccer guy on Twitter that does yeah. the, the, the kind he of the, do. The silly thing. You, you should do an assumed name. You should um, do the baseball, sort of baseball guy. guy from London. Exactly, yeah. yeah. You should I think do I'm the out. baseball guy. I think I might. I think I might. I think you need educating over there, definitely. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely right. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, lots of other exciting things have been going on uh, over the course of the last uh, few days, of course. So, are you predicting, if I'm correct in saying it, Mark, are we predicting a Juventus-Real uh, Madrid final, which Real Madrid win? I'm predicting that Real Madrid will get to the final. Mm. Um, I think there'll be goals. I wouldn't surprise I'm going to predict Monaco 2, Juventus 1. I think both Blimey. teams will score later today. Mm. I think Mbappe, um, Dybala, and I think Falcao will score as well. There's your, uh, there's your prediction, but I think Juventus will overturn it with a 1-0 second leg win and go through and away goals as the old lady usually do. They yeah, that's find right. a way. And where will Mbappe be next stuff. season? No, we where will Mbappe questions. be? We yeah. haven't got time for any more questions. Look at the time and try and do that. This is Talk Sport. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. Now, here's one from David. He says, yep. uh, Could MG and Porky please wish my son Harry a happy 11th birthday? My other son is 12. I think MG's boys are similar ages to mine. That is correct. Who, uh, but, who is that? Uh, uh, this is uh, David who says, Could you wish your son Harry a happy 11th birthday? Big Harry, fan of the show. have a very happy 11th birthday, my yeah. boy. 11's a great age because when I was 11, I took my 11 plus. Did you? Yeah, they don't have the 11 plus anymore. I took my 11 plus when I was only 10. Did you? Yeah. Why? Because I was a child prodigy. Nah, rubbish. And also, I was one of those kids who his birthday yeah. was in August, right? Yes. So that I was oh, always I behind. I and see. if your birthday's in and you, August... <laughs> and you've been behind ever since. Uh, no, I was always behind in age, is you what I'm saying. You the trapdoor there, didn't you? Uh, no, yeah. what I'm saying is I was always behind in age, behind so that I was actually backwards. brighter than the people who were older than me yeah. because I had to go into the same class as them. Okay. You would either do that or you would be left behind by a year yeah. and you would be two years older, or younger than everybody else. And when did this brightness uh, depart, desert you? Uh, it's never deserted. It, I think it no. has. This is why I'm sitting where I'm sitting and you're sitting where you're sitting. Yeah, now Luxury Lizzie is trying to make up for her earlier uh, insults to me. Oh, yeah. Uh, but she's doing it by re-insulting me. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, well, Porky... So, so, basically, you're not going to read out what she's saying. So, here, here are. Uh, so, uh, MG puts his hand in his pocket. Yeah. And wouldn't he, but Mike Parry won't even spend 60p for some sweets for his mate. What sort of mate is yeah. that? What is that about? Well, she's going on about the... Um, the chocolate machine last week when I tried oh, yeah. to, to buy you a bar of oh, yeah. chocolate, right? Well, do you know, I was but reminded won't, of that. It won't take new pound yeah, coins, right. so I couldn't get you one. So I it was wasn't a question of, of me not spending it. I was reminded of that, funnily enough, this uh, yesterday morning oh, yes. when the boffins here at Talk Sport managed to upload the wrong podcast. Yeah, they did. They put the wrong podcast they out. Did. They put out one from last week. Yeah. Now, this bloke from Livingston but still it was hasn't... But uh, it was your problem originally, wasn't it? Well, as I've constantly tried to explain mm. to you, I mm. mean, when we leave this place, yes. and the people who organise our podcast, aside from the ones that we do ourselves, we which are of our live shows or ones that we record independently. Yes. It's all down at Talk Sport. We don't control Talk Sport. We do not run Talk Sport. No. We do not have any sway over what Talk Sport does. No. So for any of those planks out there who mm. would like to blame me or even you yes. for what goes wrong with the podcast, yeah. it's not our fault. Well, I mean, the thing is, the podcast did go wrong this morning. One phone call from me, whoosh, it was all right Who's again. And, and it went out. Well, I can't go into that. I'm no, not you don't know who you called, did you? I'm not naming names. No, because you don't names. even know the people that you actually have to talk to. Hey, listen, I'm not naming yeah, names. Please don't try and take credit. No. Things you haven't done. No. Now, this plank Steve O in Livingston is still trying to make out that yes. I had some kind of jiggery pokery going on up in Edinburgh. Right. He says, You won't be sitting around skeletal in your chair. Mm. Does it ring any bells, Mike? It's never too late to fess up. Yeah. Steve O, you know, you're getting yourself into a very big hole here, mate. 
Well, carry on digging, if I were you, and you'll end up having to lose your house or something. If I were you, I'd just ignore the boy well, okay. because uh, we've got better things to do. I don't ignore do. people who try to make yeah, out that I've yeah. done something wrong in life. Yeah, well, okay? I, I, you know, they... I know that you have to ignore them because you've done so many wrong things no, in I your haven't. life. No, I haven't. Never done any wrong things in my life well, at you all just told that I'm ashamed you, of. You spent yesterday telling us how mm. yeah, you uh, sidled up to the woman from uh, Port Patrick so that you could cheat your way through to a journalistic uh, qualification. Yeah, but that was rat-like cunning. No, it wasn't. No, no, there's nothing wrong with that. It's called cheating. No, it's not cheating at all. That's uh, and It's very unfair to accuse me of that. It was rat-like cunning. Well, you admitted it was cheating. Um, well, it was uh, It was a manipulation of the structure of the exam, uh-huh. I, w- I would agree. Yeah. But that's not rat-like cunning. Now, you seem to have a bug in your bonnet about Roy Keane tonight. Why is that? A bug in my bonnet? No, yeah. that is a not the right phrase. Bonnet. A bee in my bonnet, yeah. yes, because he's on the back page of some papers here yes. uh, having a go at various football teams who he said... Mm. should not be saying that mm. they're doing well to be in the top four right. and thereby qualifying for the Champions League. Right. He says they should be ashamed of that. Mm. Now, it's time, I mean, I quite like Roy Keane uh, when he's a, a TV pundit. Yeah. But what I don't like Roy Keane doing is giving interviews uh, to say things like, shame on you. Yes. He's blasted United Liverpool for treating shame, the top four shame, finish. Shame, so shame, He says, shame. get a grip, it makes me cringe. Shame on you. Now, first of all, if you look at this man, right, look at his uh, beard. You know what to do. Look at yeah, his beard. That's right, yeah, it looks know, wild, now, doesn't it? I mean, your beard is, is relatively sort of calm and well protected. It is. Compared to well his manicured, beard, I think which looks say. like a sort of a bird's nest, yeah. right? He's yeah. basically saying that uh, United and Liverpool uh, should not at all be any way happy and it's fact cringeworthy for mm. them to say mm. we're looking forward to finishing in the top four so that we can go and play in Europe next season yes. in the Champions League. Yes. What an absolute joke. I think what's really sad about the Roy Keane situation mm. is that he is to the fans' uh, mind, a legend at uh, Old Trafford, particularly for that European Cup semi-final. I think it was away to Juventus, well, wasn't so, it? When he dragged them through and for well, so for many so other things. so many other things. Yeah, but when exactly. they had the punch-ups with, uh, you know, Van yeah. Roy and Arsenal and all that sort of uh, stuff. And, I mean, everyone uh, remembers all that. Yeah, uh, you're absolutely right. And Patrick Berger and all that kind of stuff. But uh, what I was going to say is, yeah. is that in the end, it turned sour on him when, to my memory, he did an interview with MUTV, which yeah. Sir Alex Ferguson then banned from going out mm. because it was Roy Keane berating other players in the dressing room. And, and Alex, Sir Alex didn't want that to happen. That's right. And Roy Keane always said, look, hang on, I was a captain. I was just saying, you know, they've got to, you know, pull their socks up and get on with it. But uh, I think Sir Alex Ferguson thought he'd overstepped the line. So it wasn't long after that things went sour and then Roy Keane went off to Celtic, where it didn't really work. I mean, well, he's never really had it work out for him as a manager, has he? I mean, he hasn't been able to motivate well, players in the same again, way that he could as a, as a player. See, again, that was very strange because he went to Sunderland as a manager yeah. and, you know, the initial burst of fantastic energy and enthusiasm and iron discipline, but the iron discipline was too harsh. When he was telling players, the coach goes at nine o'clock. Yeah. If you're not there at nine o'clock, the coach goes without you. Yeah. And all that kind of stuff, right. you know? And that iron discipline stuff. But isn't it weird how sometimes uh, some, some men can manage to make that work? Yes. In some way, shape or form. But yes. others just can't do it. Yeah. And he's not charming enough to make it happen. I and mean, what he's saying here, basically, yeah. he says, for big teams like Man United and Chelsea yeah. and Arsenal celebrating fourth, mm. I'd say shame on you. When I see clubs like Liverpool and mm. even Manchester United celebrating getting top four, I cringe at yeah. it. Yeah, I know, I know. And, uh, and, uh, and again, why is he speaking out against his old club? Some people like... Ian Rush, Kenny Dalglish for Liverpool. Yeah. Some players like, um, you Ian know... Ian Wright, even. I mean, Ian Wright's uh, very yeah, passionate. Yeah, Ian, Ian Wright for Arsenal. Incredibly, I to- I, incredibly I totally passionate, agree. but he does not ever criticise the team, does No, he? no, no, that's what I'm saying. And, and other players for lesser clubs, not lesser clubs, but clubs, are, you know, smaller clubs who, who have great loyalty. Tony Cotty, very loyal to West Ham, things like that, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I always think it's a shame when a legend of the past uh, has a go. By the way, how many times have I told you that I thought that uh, Chris Coleman, mm. who I think is an excellent manager, yeah. should have got out of Wales last summer. You did say and, that. And uh, decided to go. Yeah. So how about this that's mm. going to appear in one of tomorrow morning's newspapers? Chris Coleman is set to consider his Wales future if they lose to Serbia a defeat next month would leave Wales World Cup hopes hanging by a thread. Coleman snubbed Premier League interest last summer yes. in a bid to guide Wales to Russia. Um, and you know, Well, do it, you think that he's now likely to take a step back from that, if that indeed turns out to be the case, and he goes knows? somewhere else? Because Becky yeah. makes an interesting point. She yes. says, how about Moyes for West Ham if uh, Slavin Bilic ends up walking the walk? Um... Mr. But, why Gold, would you, but why would you hire David Moyes? I was about to say, Mr Gold and Mr Sullivan are very successful businessmen. They make great decisions on the personnel they hire. Whether or not they think that David Moyes is in the right place to come to West Ham, does he have a, enough 
um, what's the word I'm looking for? Credit in the bank yeah. in winning philosophy mm. at the moment. Right. And some would say perhaps not. Well, you would not look at David yeah. Moyes, and he does have an unfortunate sort of look about him. Mm. You know, he looks like a man who's got these kind of like slightly empty, yep. staring eyes. Yeah. Uh, he looks like a man who's looking into the abyss. Indeed. Even when things are going well, he Indeed. looks like that, right? Indeed. And uh, here's one from Lizzie who says, mm. Did mm. you know that Jermaine Defoe has a clause in his contract that if they do go down, yeah. he is able to go anywhere he wants and anywhere that wants him? Well, so suddenly go down and they don't keep Jermaine Defoe, then, you know, well, I'm sorry. Well, they've gone down. Suddenly down. That's so, what, so, no, what I'm saying. If they go down and don't keep him, if then a, they're not coming back up. If a Premier League club comes along and offers Jermaine Defoe a contract, of course he'll go. He'll yeah. not play in the Championship. Why wouldn't he? You know, I told you earlier when we were, um, you know, we were talking to uh, Mr Goldstein and Cundy, you yes. know, as we... Well, uh, the sports bar. Yeah, as they were sidling out and we were sort of sidling in. Sidling? But, yes. That's but, sort of an unfortunate turn of phrase. No, no, it's just an they expression. They were sidling out. They well, were leaving the studio. The, we were coming into the studio. We hot desk the studios, that's all I'm saying. That's okay? what we do, yeah. But right. sidling, it yeah. conjures up a nasty image in No, my no, mind. it doesn't to me. Yeah. Now, what I was going to say to you was, I was trying to tell them, do we realise the power of the Real Madrid um, PR machine? It is enormous. It certainly is. And do you know what happens? Mm. And it happens all the time. Time. When uh, Real Madrid focus on a player, they pour so much praise on him that he thinks he's the best player in the world. And somebody examined the, the Gareth Bale situation, you know. First of all, it starts by expressing an interest. Mm. Then the paper that supports Real Madrid, Marker, yes. starts writing stories about him being the best player in the world and how he's destined It's all about destabilising the club, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah. Then Marker TV, which are very influential in Spain, yeah. get involved and start bringing in all sorts of experts who say he would be the perfect player for Madrid. Yeah. And then what happens next... Um, which is also very clever, is that great Real Madrid players from the past mm. suddenly start texting Gareth Bale yeah. and ringing him up. And, Why don't you come over? And yeah, and, yeah. and you know, and by the way, we've had another yeah. you know British uh, player, Steve McManaman. Yes. He did well here. Why don't you? And, yeah. and, and and it just goes on and did on. Did you and like on. listening? I'll tell you what I like listening to tonight. Yeah. This is Zinedine Zidane. Yes, talking in French. Yes, ahead of the uh, of the game uh, that Real Madrid played. Yeah, because I just thought I, I really quite well, like that. Uh, uh, funny enough, Zinedine Zidane, before he became manager of Real Madrid, was chief PR smoother uh -huh. for players that Real Madrid were trying to attract yes. to the club. You know was what I mean? Raul one of those as well? Uh, Raul is certainly one of them. Yeah. But can you imagine being a sort of young player like Gareth Bale, yeah. you know, who's doing OK in England? They think they want him uh, out now, don't they? Uh, uh, who? Raul, Gareth Bale. Didn't they want to get him out? No, definitely season? not. Are you no, sure? no, I'm pretty sure, yeah. No, no, but imagine so if sure. you suddenly got a call from one of the world's greatest football living legends, Zinedine Zidane. Yeah. Why don't you come to Real Madrid? Yeah. It is Bonjour. your sort of club, you know. Oh, hello. I would say, I'm you? sure you have called me by yes. mistake. No, no, I call you because, Gareth, you are my boy. Yeah. Ma chérie, ma right. chérie. So you spend a lot of time having these fantasies. <laughs> <laughs> no, these sort of things happen, believe me. I know a lot yeah. about you the PR business. You wake up the middle of the night thinking, is that Zinedine Zidane? Excuse me. Or is it the guy with the, the 12, 12 pizzas that I, I just said out? I think you've forgotten. At one stage, at one stage during my multi-talented uh, career, oh, yeah. I was at the top of the PR tree. <laughs> Yeah, like the monkey. This is Talk Sport. Those were the days, my friend. We thought they'd never end. We'd sing and dance forever and a day. We'd live the life we choose. We'd fight and never lose. For we were young and sure to have our way. Now, a very nice little message to read out over that piece of music, yes. which we'll get to in a second, from yep. Lyle. It says... Could you please give a special shout out to my beautiful, inspirational wife undergoing chemotherapy? Yeah. Sent us that about half an hour ago. I saw that and yeah. uh, I was about to point that out to you as well. Of course, yes. we express our very fond wishes um, for, um, what's the lady called again? Uh, uh, it was Lyle's wife. Lyle's wife, yeah. yeah. So I haven't got a name. I, I couldn't find a name. Uh, Lyle, for your wife, of course we express our heartfelt uh, wishes and hope that everything goes very well uh -huh. for your beautiful, inspirational wife undergoing chemotherapy. It's not a very pleasant thing to have to undergo, uh, but it has a very high rate of success these days. So uh, we're with you and we're thinking of you. Indeed. And keep us informed, please. Uh, it doesn't actually give his wife No, it doesn't. That's, that's the problem. That's why I Now, um, that piece of music, right? Yes. Quite Mary uh, Hopkins. Yes, exactly. Mary Those Hopkins. were the days. Do you remember it from your Youth? I do actually. Those I remember her sitting in a rocking chair. Well, it wasn't a rocking reason. chair. She was sitting on a stool, right? right. She sat on a now, high stool. Please, whatever you do, do not yes. make the mistake of saying that it was written by Paul McCartney. It wasn't. We've been through this before. No, no. It's a, it, 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 it was a folk right? song, yeah. and it was refashioned by Paul McCartney and John Lennon yes. for Mary Hopkins. Yes. Because when they set up Apple, the record company, yeah. they thought we better find a few artists. The problem is right. that the, the Lennon and McCartney had the same problem that um, a lot of 
great footballers have when they become managers. Yeah. Can't seem to work out why the people they're right. now in charge of aren't as good as them. Yes. So it's very difficult for them to go around the, the country trying but to you're find... You're right to say that she did sign for the Apple label. She did, yeah. Yeah. And uh, the, the other group they found were Bad Finger. Yeah. If you want it... Here yes. it We've is. We've done all this Come before. Yeah, okay. What is the point of all this? Well, the point of all this is, is that Mary Hopkin, who was a young Welsh girl, was 19 years of age when she was, plucked, she, yeah, she was plucked out of some... Uh, uh, folk, Ponta Dawi. Some folk, uh, yeah, some, some folk group in, yeah. in some village hall in sort of... Ponta you know, Dawi. The middle of Wales. Yeah. In where? Ponta Dawi. Ponta Dawi. Ponta Dawi, that's yeah. right. And she was put on this high stool with a guitar yes. and a long blonde hair. Yeah. And uh, Paul McCartney said, here, have a look at this and sing this. She sang it. It went to number one. Amazing that he could have looked at any number of different people when yes. he looked at her. Yes. I mean, imagine the chances of that. Yeah, well... I mean, it could, yeah. I mean, you know, because what I'm saying is I'm not yes. saying she didn't deserve it. No. But there could have been maybe another dozen women yeah. who were doing exactly what she was doing. Exactly. Who but didn't get to him first. Y- yeah, well, you know, they they did have a certain talent, for talent, if you see what I mean, uh-huh. spotting talent, so so that's what she did. Yeah. So um, she then became an international sensation right. because of her looks. You know, she was a... Uh, well, you say that. Oh, she was a beautiful blonde girl. Yeah, but, I mean, she was a one-hit wonder. No, she wasn't. Yes. Yeah, no, she wasn't. One hit wonder. She, those were the days was her biggest hit. Yeah. But then after that, there was one which was called Tears of Rain Run Down no. My Window no. Pane. No. No, I'm on my own again. No. And there's another one called... Uh, one hit wonder. There was another one called Tema Harbour. No, OK. Sing one a hit song wonder. of Tema Harbour. She wasn't a one hit wonder. She was definitely She's one She's still wonder. performing today, right? Really? Still she, a one hit wonder. She, she, had a, she had a great career. And for you to just dismiss her like that is typical. Why, why are you going on about it? I'm going on about it you've because... Been on, it... You've been banging on about her for ages and ages and ages no. ever since we've been doing this show. No, 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 no. She, the reason I'm banging on her about it, yeah. as you say, is right. that today is her 67th birthday. Oh, great. So that's why I thought we would pay tribute to okay. a woman who became part of the legend, the folklore of the Summer of Love in yeah. 1967, even though actually that song came out in 1968. Well, she's a one-hit wonder according to the charts, OK? She only had one number one yeah. in 1968, well, most with people... those were the days. And what about her other hits? All the other hits were something like number 32, no, number rubbish. 46, rubbish. number 19. Rubbish. That's what I'm looking at the chart nah, here. Yeah, you're looking at the wrong charts, No, I'm man. not looking at the wrong charts. Wrong charts. Anyway, um, you put everybody down who's successful because... Because you've never true. really been successful That's in life. That's not true. I've been very successful in no, life, No, you've actually. been semi-successful, I no. would say. No, uh, you have a sort of rather pathetic mm. addi- uh, you know, sort of addiction what? to anything to do with the Beatles. No, you no. You try and get them no, into every show no, that I we don't. do. And the only reason you like her is because she was somehow adopted by Apple Music. No, it's because she, she, you know... She, she was a one-hit wonder. Why don't you just admit it? She produced a smashing and stunning I mean, you record. spent all of yesterday... Ev- everybody remembers. You spent all of yesterday's mm. show slagging off Cheryl Cole who's had a no, much more successful career yeah. in music than this woman has ever had. I, I've never slagged off Cheryl Cole. I admire people who are You successful. said you didn't understand why she was in any way popular now, listen, because she was a Geordie. Uh, I, didn't, I never you said that You slagged her off on all of yesterday's show. Not, not true, and I resent you saying that. Well, you'd like me to play it back. No, thanks. Now, listen, uh, I've come across a chap uh, called John Nash, who, who is a uh, vicar. Vicar. Um, Vicar John Nash. Yeah, but he's uh, he's actually written a piece right. for Country Life magazine about... Um, no, he hasn't. No, he's, he's responded to a piece in Country Life magazine right. about... Country Life. Yes, the, the increasing obsession with people to have themed weddings. Themed weddings. And how pathetic they are. Yes. You know, like, oh, uh, having a themed wedding. Oh, what's a theme? Mm. Oh, 1950s rockers and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? I saw a picture, actually, funnily enough, today in my travels around the various stories I was looking at of some model who got married with a bunch of other models as her bridesmaids. Oh, I see. And she was wearing a a swimsuit in which it said, you know, um, uh, bride, and everybody else was bride squad. But they were all like these supermodels. Yeah, oh, I mean, it looked ridiculous. What do you mean, oh, God? Well, just ridiculous. You, well, it uh, wasn't I mean, they all looked very nice. But it was kind be of traditional. slightly ludicrous because yes. they were all in the Caribbean. Yes. And they all obviously made bucket loads of money. That's so right. it wasn't very realistic. That's right. What would um, you have your wedding themed as? I'd have a normal uh, wedding normal. and uh, respect the vows and, uh, uh, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But um, what he says is that one of the worst problems with weddings are the mothers of the bride and groom oh, yeah. who go mad. Yeah. You know, they uh, they want their children's weddings to be a star-spangled mega ceremony. Yes. And, um, Very important if, to keep them out of it if you can. Yeah, yeah. And if anybody ignores any of the suggestions they make for the ceremony, they go mad on the day, you know. Right. And... Um, you know, for things like um, one woman came in and said to the vicar, 
um, it's all right if we take some photographs of the wedding. He said, yeah, and then she brought a film crew oh dear. and brought the film crew into the church mm. before the wedding. And they were but setting up half lights. cleared this with the, uh, with the daughter? Well, apparently not. I mean, no. one of the things that I had to yeah. do, yeah. and I know that, uh, that many people will feel um, some resonance with this, was yeah. that, you know, when I, I thought about getting married, I actually said no yes. three times before yes. we agreed to get married. Yes. Because I didn't want my uh, uh, then soon-to-be wife's family yeah. organising it. No. I didn't want them paying for it. Right. I didn't want them uh, being in charge of it. Right. And I wanted to be in charge of my own wedding. Yes. And so as long as um, the bride's father was alive, yes. you know, that was going to be the case. That right. I was going to be able to take control of it. Okay. And it was going to have to take place in Connecticut. Right. And it was going to have to be in a place so where... So you just sort of, what, organised it very quickly and got well, on with it? Well, no. What I had to do was wait until he died. Oh, I see, yeah. And when he yeah. wasn't available to do it, yeah. then the, what the family that were left okay. didn't really want to spend the money. Oh, I see. Okay, so fine, I could good. then say to them, "Look, here's the deal. Yeah. I will arrange it in New York. Right. I will pay for it, yeah. and uh, you'll have nothing to do with it." Okay, fine. And they went. You see, I can tell already that no, you're no. not interested in any no, of these I details am. of I, an actual I, I real be- wedding because it reminds me of the trip you took with your bride's father to yeah. his workplace when he went Indeed. in and came out to find he'd been fired. He had been fired. You know, so that might have killed him. Uh, <laughs> you know, well, yeah. it didn't actually. Why are you laughing yeah. about that? Well, because why do you find that funny? Why? Why would you find a guy dying of a heart attack in Lincoln Centre no, no, during no, no, Madame no. Butterfly in no. any way amusing? No, I don't find that amusing. It was terribly well. upsetting for I, all of us. It is upsetting. Yeah. Now, now, and particularly for his daughter. Of course, it's very upsetting. Who may be listening to this show. Yeah, well, I, if it, she is, then you, Susan will know I have a great deal of sympathy for You have for to give her a name away. No, OK, I won't. Yeah, shocking. Now, uh, what I want to tell you... shocking. What I want to tell you... So, it's it's, already, you've already given no, her no, a name away. No, not at all. <laughs> now, I want to tell you something you didn't know. What's and, that? And which, in fact, might shock... Uh, you a, see, again, you haven't asked any supplementary questions. What do you mean? I've told you about what I did, right? Well, I went to your you, wedding, so I know all about yeah, it. Yeah, but you don't know all about it because you don't know how much it cost me. You didn't ask me. Well, no, you didn't it ask cost me. you. I saw well, all much... the arrangements for the well, uh, you don't reception know about it. and everything. Well, you tell me then what I did. You tell me what I did. We, we had the... Uh, st- uh, <laughs> what's his name's loft? What's his name's loft? Yeah. You know, the, the, you know, the arch what's drunkard who we have to load onto the back it's of a lorry sometimes Smith. to get him home. Bob Smith, yeah. When you say we... Yeah. You say, I hired his loft. Yeah. Well, you didn't hire it. You borrowed it. Uh, no, he was moving out of it, right? Yeah, that's right. So yeah. it was going to be vacant. That's right. So it was a New York loft. Yeah. It was a huge space, and yes. we had that for the reception. And what so did we do what, with what it? else do we need to know? Well, so what did we do with it? Just filled walk it in full there? of booze. Yeah, that's filled right. Filled it yeah. full of booze. Yeah, from the lift. The, you also know, the filled industrial it lift. full of tables and chairs. Yes, that's right. right. Covered them in a pink tablecloth. Well, you cloths. didn't do any of that. Maggie yes, did. did that for you. No, the, the no I organised all of it. Bob's wife. We had to hire a DJ to play music. Well, most people do. You know, when you have a wedding reception. Well, you've never been married, so what would you know? Well, I've been to I've been to weddings where you have a wedding reception. Oh right, okay. Look, we're trying to get off with the bride's uh, mother or something. No, look, just calm down. I'm perfectly I'm, calm. I'm I, just trying to work out why you yeah. don't want to talk about an actual wedding that took place rather than some fantasy wedding. Well, because that was years ago, right? right. And I was there, so I experienced it all. Yeah, but you don't know the facts, though. Now, I need to tell you something about weddings which you didn't know, and mm. this is crucial to 85% of our male audience. Yes. Do you know that getting married when you're intoxicated actually nullifies the ceremony? What are you talking about? If you get married when no. you're drunk... Yes. What you do you are mean not... while you're actually giving the vows? Yeah, you're not, yeah, you don't, you're not well, married. I wasn't, well, I, luckily I wasn't uh, drunk you're not when, married. I was, when I got married. Right, uh, the vicar warns here, all the hype can drive a man to drink. That's mm. why I tend to stand in the church doorway pre-ceremony and keep an eye on the pub across the road. More than once I've had to drag out a groom having a meltdown before he sinks another double gin and tonic by explaining that I don't marry anybody I consider inebriated. In law, if anyone says their vows when drunk, they haven't given proper consent and the marriage is officially voided. Uh huh. Hearing this sobers them up very quickly. Yes. You know what it'd make me do? What? Have another three large gin well, and tonics. Well, luckily uh, for, <laughs> for every woman that's ever been anywhere close to marrying you, uh, you've always been too drunk to actually carry out the service, which is very, very good for what them. A, what a disgrace. You'd have to say, what a to... lucky escape for many of them. That's a disgrace. Particularly the New York Welcoming Committee. Disgrace. This is what makes you think you're so holy? You're gonna be guacamole before too long. Oh, you're a green one, and you know that you're out of season. You better let somebody eat you. Let somebody eat you. You better let somebody eat you. Before it's too late. That's Weird Al Yankovic. Who? Weird Al Yankovic. He specialises in singing sort of, you know, humorous versions oh, of I real see. songs. I see, yeah. 
You know the real song that that was meant to be, um, right? You remember the, the, the was, lyrics? Was it Conquistador? No, Desperado. Oh, Desperado, that's it, yeah, yeah. What's Conquistador? Like that. Conquistador. Da, da, what is that? Da, 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 You're I not thinking know. of Neil Young? No, it's called, it's called Cortez Conquistador. the Killer. No, I wasn't thinking right. of that, no. Let's talk to Patrick Lucy, because Indeed. he's a man who knows an awful lot about avocados. Right? Yeah. He is, in fact, the vice president of sales at Delray Avocados. Yeah. Apparently, there's some kind of crisis going on. We're going to find out from Patrick why there mm. is a crisis. Patrick, very good morning to you. Good morning. How are you doing? Yeah, very, very well, well thank you. Is there indeed a crisis? Are avocado prices rising up through the roof, and what's the reason for it? Uh, they, they are very strong all over the uh, all over the world right now, in, in Europe where you're at and then out in, uh, in the United States. Uh, where I'm at, <clears throat> they've probably been close to a record high, I'd say, probably for the last two years. And uh, the biggest... Uh, variable and that is the the global consumption it's uh there's (laughs) it's kind of the law of supply and demand there is a lot more demand than there is supply right now Well, so you guys just hiking the price is that what you're telling me no we're not we're not hiking the price uh it's mostly in most countries it's uh it's the growers and trying to find a market uh almost in the u.s you're trying to find a market uh when you're selling to Sometimes somewhere slow it down uh, yep. to kind of to, to make sure you can supply all your customers. And we've been at record prices now for almost a year, and the consumption is continuing to rise. So it's it's really not the the growers or the avocado distributors that are raising the price. It's uh, the, the consumption. Well, yeah, but Patrick, isn't this also combined with a rash of bad weather? For instance, I'm told by uh, my man in the know that in Peru, uh, most of the crop was wiped out by severe flooding. Uh, Similar problems in Mexico and production in California down by around 44% after a drought. So there's a lot of natural uh, factors, aren't there, which are contributing to this massive price hike? Yes, yeah, that, that is also correct. Uh, and Peru, the, the, uh, it wasn't as bad as, as stated. It was very bad up in the northern areas of Peru, um, uh, which probably about eight hours north of Lima. Yeah. But uh, other areas, they did, they did fine. Um, in the U.S., we are probably half the crop was what we were last year, and the big uh, culprit in that is our, the water issues we've had out here the last mm-hmm. 10 years. But. Uh, we've we've had some very good rains this year, so we're expecting a very good crop next year. Um, the the real probably big uh, supply issue is with Mexico. Uh, last year they had a, an extremely extremely large crop the past two years, yeah. and we, we feel that their trees were just a little bit tired, mm. and they didn't uh, produce as much mm. as they have in the past. And there's probably a little bit of an overestimation in their crop size. So harvest schedules uh, weren't where they were supposed to be. Yeah. Uh, is there anything? And, is this got anything and, to do with Trump and versus Mexico? Is there a problem with that? No, nothing. Nothing as of yet. Uh, sure. Yeah. Everything. Everything is uh, is good as good right now. So there's hmm. nothing. Uh, nothing going on with Trump and Mexico with prices. Okay. Is it very fashionable food, um, avocado, uh, Patrick? Because in this country. People used to eat it in Indian restaurants. They used to have avocado hey. and prawn cocktails, no, they didn't, didn't they? No. They did. They did. No, that's an Italian restaurant. Well, all right, Italian. But I've, I've had that in Indian restaurants hey. as well. But it was very popular. Yeah. And then it kind of it, it went out of fashion. But now I understand that the uh, attraction with avocado amongst the trendy people of California and those sort of places is the fact that it is very, very good for your blood pressure. It lowers your cholesterol levels. The potassium content helps your skin. I mean, it's turned out to be a very, very high-protein... Well, protein... you now the world's expert on avocado. Yes, I am, yes. It's turned out to be a very, very high-protein <laughs> food, doesn't it, with loads of oil um, content and fruit, and, and it helps heart disease. Really? Yes, it is. It's, it's, it's the good fats. So it's, it, uh, besides tasting good and going with pretty much anything... Yep. Uh, it's uh, it's very good for you as well. That's right. So and and other countries uh, throughout the world are now starting to understand that one of the new big uh, or kind of the two big 
new markets are China and India. Well, you can imagine. Well, it's like, a, it's like a superfood, isn't it? That's the thing. Superfood, um, Patrick. But, I mean, the bottom line for us in Europe, right, is that we've had uh, some tweets tonight from people who knew we were going to be talking about this, saying there's no massive problem here. Um, the, the prices are not going up particularly high. Uh, you're still able to buy, certainly, Hass avocados mm. for a reasonably good price. Mm. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not being taken out of all context and all that sort of thing. Where do our uh, avocados in Europe come from? Uh, in in Europe, uh, specifically uh, uh, for kind of the UK, uh, you're looking mostly uh, Peru, Peru, Chile. Um, How did you, you know? We'll get some uh, South Africa. Right. Uh, every once in a while, you will probably get some some fruit from the US, uh, but it's mostly the the South uh, South uh, America countries and then also Mexico. Now, is there any truth to uh, what people have always told me and which I've often tried and always failed to do? Mm. If you take the, uh, the, the the stone out of the middle of an avocado and you try and, and sort of somehow um, suspend it by, by uh, matchsticks or, or uh, you know, uh, sort of uh, bits of wood in a water, it will actually grow into an avocado that you can then eat. Uh, it'll grow into a tree, really? but uh, more like more likely than not, it will not produce any fruit. No, well, it's the most stupid idea, well, and I'm no, really sorry to have wasted no. time on that one. No, Patrick. because you must remember. No, you, you, you'll get a you'll get a See? very beautiful tree, and there, Patrick, there is a chance you See? might get. Patrick says it's not a, a waste of pieces. time. Yeah, and because everybody who had yeah. any brains or any creativity when yeah. they were at university yes. tried to grow an avocado bush. Did they? Yeah. Why are they high well, on drugs or something? Well, because probably. they were students. Well, yeah. maybe. But the point is, yeah. you tried to do it, mm. and it didn't always work out. I never managed to get one to grow. No, I'm really sorry to have wasted your time on that one, Patrick. It's a load no, of yeah, nonsense. You, you, no, you, you can grow a you can grow a tree. Your problem is your climate there is not yeah. going to. Well, that's absolutely true. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah absolutely right. That's right. Now, when do we expect the avocado market to return to normal? I.e., when are the normal. ordinary working class people going to be able to afford an avocado? again uh it's a it's a very good question and i'm not yeah. sure uh i can give you a very good answer mm-hmm. um because uh, i get asked that every day from uh, retailers here in the u.s i and bet you do food service companies. Mm. uh and with the, the worldwide growth of it it, mm. it could be a an item that stays very high price until we can uh produce more there's okay. there's going to be new uh growing areas that have started you have uh Colombia that is growing avocados and are distributing to Europe. Right. You wouldn't want to buy them from there, South would you? Africa. They're going to be smuggling cocaine in them or something. Well, you know, no, I mean, no. you've got to be careful with Colombia. You've got to be a bit careful with Colombia. But you see, where I'm getting to yeah. here, Patrick, is that one of these days, avocado is going to be like caviar, isn't it? It's going to be for an elite few people well, on Earth like, no. to be able no, to eat. Because caviar nobody else fish will be able eggs. to. Yeah. There's black. I, th- I think there's, an, there's enough planting going on that... Yeah. Uh, I think eventually uh, it will catch up with consumption, but I think uh, worldwide, if you, especially when you have the countries like India and China with their population, if they yes. uh, continue to uh, consume avocados, it is going to become, uh, or the, these prices will stay around. But uh, yeah. there are, in the, the avocado industry, a lot of plantings going on yeah. in a bunch of different countries trying to trying to keep up with that consumption to to bring a good quality product to market at uh, at good prices. Uh, I mean, is, is there anything that, that we could do or that could be done with avocados that we haven't thought of yet? Because I mean, you know, like, obviously guacamole we know about. Yeah. You know, we know about you know slicing it and serving it up with uh, with prawns. Sort of, uh, the, the three avocado and salad. prawn cocktail. Well, avocado and prawns yeah. cocktail. Yeah, yeah. But but I'm thinking of the the, the, the caprese salad with mo- mo- uh, with mozzarella and tomato. Is there much that we can do that we don't know that we can do with avocados yet? So, Patrick, you can do uh, all types of things. You uh, can in the U.S. There, you got uh, avocado smoothies are very popular. Yes. Um, mm. So, it also, uh, what's becoming very popular in in the U.S. is substituting avocado for butter in uh, in baking. Oh, really? yeah, that's a good idea. And, in baking. And, yeah, in baking. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course you can. Yeah, I, I used oh, yeah, to have. About uh, baking. I do. I used to have a turkey, ham, and avocado sandwich. Rubbish. Uh, which I thought That's was rubbish. exquisite. Absolutely, absolutely exquisite. Turkey, ham, and, and avocado. Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah. It was, well, that was it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. On, what on, sort of bread? 
The white bread. White yeah, bread. It was very nice I indeed. I don't believe that. Very nice indeed. But uh, you're absolutely right there, Patrick, because avocado is just like any other product on earth. And when China and India get involved, for instance, when they start buying iron ore, yeah. the price of iron ore rockets. And so if they start buying avocados in mass, the price is going to rocket because of their huge demand. Yeah, there's a, they have a very big population, and yep. um, the, biggest, the biggest issue, or not biggest issue, uh, is when you're bringing a avocado to a new country, is trying to figure out how it fits in yep. with their can they grow them uh, with their food. Patrick, they can grow they, them there, they can't they? They? With, uh, China is such a, a big country. Yeah. If you look at it on a map from the equator, there are areas that they can produce avocados and. Uh, there are areas that are starting to grow avocados, and mm. I think it would be um, some areas in the South Pacific and then Asia will start to have very right. good production. Right. Yeah, you mentioned our climate over here in Europe, Patrick, but, I mean, we get over that with a lot of other foods like tomatoes and flowers and things like that <laughs> by growing... <laughs> growing eat flowers. Hang on, by growing things in greenhouses. Now... Can't we, uh, you know, in, in hot houses? couldn't we do that and uh, relieve, uh, sorry, uh, relieve the pressure on the avocado market here in Europe? Uh, I'm not sure on that. I've, I'm not um, an expert on the, the growing uh, conditions of avocados. I don't right. Okay. Aren't you? I'm not sure. If, why not? Uh, well, surely you, <laughs> but you're an expert on avocados. That's why we've got you on. <laughs> no, well, for, no one has done uh, greenhouse avocados yet. Really? Really? I wonder why not. Yeah. Could be a market could be in that. Sorry there, yeah, it could be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Build me a greenhouse, yeah. quick. How about hydroponics? Can you grow them like that? <laughs> Your hydroponics are very popular here. Uh, no, no, one, no one has done it yet. I think wow. because of the, the, the size of the trees that they need to be, uh-huh. about 10 feet tall, yeah. uh, the sunlight for okay. uh, photosynthesis and... Mm-hmm. Pollination with bees and other flowers. Uh, yeah. Okay. I don't know. Would, I in terms would, of the, uh, if you did in, a, in terms of the elasticity yeah. of the avocado price. Yeah. How high do you think it can go before uh, the the sort of demand starts to drop off because it's just too expensive? Um, I think in, uh, for instance, uh, I'm not sh- very sure where the prices are uh, in the UK right now, but in the US, we're probably close to our peak. Uh-huh. Um. There are, there is still, we're still moving very good volume. Uh, when I started uh, in the industry about 13 years ago, mm-hmm. we'd move 20 million pounds, and that would be at Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Now we average around 45 to 50 million pounds a week. Yeah. Wow. And wow. Super Bowl is closer to 60, 65 million. And, so it's a big thing. Instance, we have Cinco, big thing yeah, for Super Bowl we have weekend. Cinco de Mayo. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, of course. And right. this week we have two. Uh, Cinco de Mayo, which is another big week, and yeah. we're moving a very good amount of avocados at prices uh, that are very high. I see. Well, that's Amazing, uh, yeah, it's a good thing though. You make it a specialist food. Yeah. It, 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 it Patrick, tastes listen, better. Tastes really better. appreciate you taking the time to talk to us, and, and we are now much, much better indeed. informed than we were uh, before we spoke to you. Yes. <clears throat> No problem. Thank Patrick, you very much. Patrick, Patrick, thank, thank you, you very, very much. much indeed. Indeed. That's Patrick Lucy there, uh, who is in fact Great guy. Um, an expert on avocados, although not Doesn't in, the, to grow them. in the growing of them. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> but a tremendous uh, yeah, piece of absolutely. information there. Yeah. You know, absolutely incredible. Yeah. Now, how about this from Stuart? Yeah. He says, Mike Parry, a massive yeah. price hike. Yeah. I've never heard it pronounced that way before. What do you mean? We are the two mics coming up in the next hour. We will be doing Ask Porky, of course. If you have not ever had a question answered, if you have not had one read out live on air, now's the time to do it. Uh, tweet us at the two mics. We've got loads and loads of really good questions already. Uh, but if you get one in, which is very, very good, it might actually make it in through the selection. Now, a couple of tweets have come in, yeah. Harry. One from Andy, who says, Porky again with a flash of brilliance. Avocado greenhouse operation sounds like private jet material. Mm, which well. uh, I think he's saying you could make a fortune. And yeah. funnily enough, that uh, it's a song called Conquistador. Yeah. which I hadn't heard of. Mm. Apparently, uh, according to um, Richard, he says, which compartment of Porky's brain did that come from? A track by Procol Harum. That's right, yeah. Hashtag one-hit wonders. That's right. Well, no, 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 no. Procol well, Harum, one shade of pale. Shade of pale right. And then the second one was Conquistador. Conquistador, I don't yeah. know. 
I don't right. know that one yeah. at all. Maybe yeah. we can dig it yeah. out and play it. Yeah, sure. Uh, Becky says this from New Zealand. I have an avocado orchard in my garden. Yes. I'm happy to join Porky in a new business venture. Mm-hmm. Porky Cardos or avocado butter. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, avocado butter's brilliant. I've had that at some well, stage in the that. past. I have. You said that as if you knew what you were talking about. Well, I think you were just like sort of no, no, oiling up to no, the No, no, no. What I'm saying is you take two pieces of white bread in which you're having some turkey or ham or something like that. Yeah. Instead of putting butter on the bread, you put avocado spread on. Really? Yes. Yeah, yeah I've had that before. See, you know, I'm like some people put peanut butter spread on and all that kind some of people, stuff. Well, my well, kids uh, like peanut butter and jelly, which yeah, is the yeah, American thing. Yeah, peanut butter and jam. But avocado is like that. It's like a spread like that. Believe me. Well, I mean, I know people have put yes. avocado on toast. Yes. But not as a sort of... Um, as yeah, a I've spread seen that as well. That, yeah, that's great. That's Chris great. says this. Out of all the guests I would have expected Mike Perry to tear a new one for, Avocado yes. Man would have been high on the list. Yes. He's, I think he's suggesting it's quite surprised that you didn't have a go at him. Why? Why would I have a go at him? Well, because you have a go at most of our guests. No, no, no. If, if, if mad scientists come on and yeah. I think they're wasting public money, I yeah. would say, why don't you go and try and uh, find, find a, a cure, cure for, for cancer, cancer yeah. rather than sending, you know, uh, rockets into space, which are doing nothing and going nowhere, uh-huh. or researching things that are never going to be solved. Yes. However... That man is head of a commercial operation which produces avocados. Patrick Lucy. Patrick Lucy yeah. against falling physical facilities, and he's now got to come up with mm. a plan yeah. to provide the two biggest countries in the world, China and India, yeah. population-wise, right. with avocados. Well, why don't they just grow them there? That's a massive challenge. Yeah. Well, perhaps they haven't got the right weather. Well, Anthony says this, Ray, avocado prices in the UK. Six months ago, yeah. I was paying one seventy nine to one ninety nine for two ripe ones, Right now two seventy nine for the same. The crop is down 40% and weak pound versus dollar. Yes. Means that that's why it's more expensive, I think, is what you said. Well, it could be. Alex here says, I can hear Porky's brain churning over. Porky's avocado coming to your deli anytime soon. So what he's saying is that my food empire shouldn't stop at Porky scratchings. Yeah. Becoming incredibly popular, by Are the they? way. I was in a I was in a pub down in Stockbroker Belt oh, yesterday. Yeah. Okay. Or was the day before? No. Monday. Monday. The bank holiday. Right. Bank holiday. Monday. No, Sunday. Sunday. It was Sunday. Well, which day was it? What, it was Sunday. Me, am I supposed to know? It was Sunday. And I thought Sunday was the day you were with your family. Yeah, I was. But well, we, say we also had a pub. Well, we made a short visit to the local uh, hostelry oh, before. Yeah. Uh, your family are just like a travelling sort of band re- of alcoholics, aren't re- they? No, they're not. That's no. all you do is go from no. one staggering about from one hostelry no, to another before returning. Occasionally stopping at home for something to eat. Returning home for lunch, you know, like a sort of late oh, yeah. lunch. Bladderated. Uh, did uh, the awning come no, out? No, no, no. Mildly intoxicated. That's did the, all. Did the awning? Was the awning uh, put out? No, the awning didn't come out. Actually, no? it wasn't that sort of weather. Oh. And. Uh, the landlady of the pub uh, came to me mm. and they said, oh, hi, Mike, you know, thank you, and, you know, we've heard about your pork scratch. And said, some people have actually yeah. had some. Where do I order them from? Yes. So that's my first location really? in Surrey, uh-huh. in Stockbroker Belt, Surrey, okay. which has taken them well, full time. That's good. By the way, yeah. uh, I should have told you this yesterday. Yes. Because I actually got a communique from a member of your family. Yes. Well, I can't say too much about right. exactly where it came from. But I'm led to believe mm. that members of your family have been so impressed by my new car yeah. that they're going to buy one. Uh, they've actually had it on order for over a year. What? Because the problem was that when you ordered yours, yeah. the F-Pace you're talking about yes. now, you were told you might have to wait until, like, now, yeah, weren't I, you, no, to get well, it? Hang on, I ordered it in about, yeah. sort of, August, right? They ordered theirs a year ago. They couldn't have ordered it a year ago. Yeah, they it did. wasn't even made then. No, they did. They no. did. And they've been waiting that Correct. long for Correct. it. They, they had the well, plan. I, didn't know. I got mine in November. Yeah, I know. But they had. Well, they haven't been able to. Uh, they were amazed when they heard that you'd got yours. Yeah. And and I said, well, I don't know. Even on holiday to New York, it could be rang up. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, but they are taking delivery of theirs this month. Are they? And it's gun barrel grey. Gun barrel grey. As opposed to yours, which is black. Mine is black, yes. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Well, so why are they copying me? Uh, they're not and copying And are you, you giving them a hard time? No, I'm not giving a hard time at all. Right. They're, they're very welcome to have it. Mm. Um, and, you know, I'm sure... I find sure it a bit creepy, they'll enjoy it. You find it a bit creepy? I find it a bit creepy. They're copying me, yeah. They're not copying they you. They are copying me. They ordered it a year no. ago. Well, they you say that. Yeah. No, you say that. No. But I don't believe that. Well, I don't care whether you believe me or not, frankly. And if you want to insult my family <laughs> on air, that's up to you, mate. But you'll get your face <laughs> smashed in in the next oh, break. Oh, what, by who? Uh, I will. Well, I, will arrange, I will arrange it personally. Really? Don't worry about that. How about this from Abdul? He yeah. says, "I never get the avocado hype. The best ones are in Ghana. Mm. They are huge and tasty, unlike the tiny bit of ones here." Is that right? Well, who can go to Ghana for an avocado? Yeah, who wants to go to Ghana for an avocado? And Robbie anyway. says this: Porky's never mentioned avocados once on the show. Uh-huh. Now he says he has it on a sandwich. Yeah. Next, there'll be flowers yeah. on his sandwich. Yeah. Hashtag plank. No, no. 
Uh, listen, by the way, yeah. that bit of chocolate I bought you tonight, OK? Yes. Because despite what Lizzie said, I... You know, that I was very nice, actually. You didn't have the right money, but I got you a... Um, you did. You gave me a... What was it called? A whisper. A whisper, yes. Yeah. Now, I had a boost, OK? Yeah. Now, guess what? Um, what? What's happening is, is that uh, manufacturers, it is alleged, oh, yeah. are producing oversized packets... With uh, reduced size goods inside. Oh yes, with lots of distance between the actual size of the uh, yeah. of the of the, of the package and what's right. actually in it, right? So it says here, customers are being duped by misleading food packaging that yeah. hides how little is really inside. It is being claimed. Oh yeah. So this is only a claim, obviously. Mm. But it says here, for instance, that the boost I had, right? Uh, a Cadbury boost packet yeah. is sixteen centimeters long. Right. So think 16 centimetres. It's hard, see, hard for me to think of that, what that is. I, I think in inch, inches still. Well, think 16 inches if you want, then. 16 inches is huge. Yeah, it is, yeah. It's bigger yeah. than a foot. Yeah, it is, yeah, yeah, of course it well, is. Well, I don't yeah. want to think about 16 inches. I want to think about All right, 16 well, I just want 16 measurements, right? I'm thinking of a boost bar, which I would say is yeah, about yeah. four inches. But anyway, the point of it is that mm. the bar inside the 16 centimetre packet is just 10 centimetres long. Eh? Hey? So what they're saying is, is that, you know, more than, uh, what's that, 16, That's two inches either side. Two inches either side. That's absolutely right. Mm. Ten sixteenths. uh, (laughs) Now that's, hang on, wait a minute. If it was eight, it would be 50%. So that's about 60%. About 60%. Well, what's obvious, right, is that every packet of chocolate that you buy, you can pinch the end of either end. That's right. And that's where the air is. That's right. It's probably about a centimetre or two. Absolutely right. Right. Now, for instance, a bag of Cadbury Dairy Milk Caribou Nibbles is 14 centimetres high. Yes. But when you put it on the ground, allegedly... Why would you put it on the ground? Well, on the table. On the table. Yeah. Right, allegedly... The nibbles inside only get up to five centimetres high. What, so 11 centimetres of nine, rubbish? Nine centimetres nine. is rubbish. Well, I mean, that's packaging, isn't it? Yeah, that's, I suppose so, yeah. I suppose. But, uh, you know, you've got to be careful what you're buying these days because well, you never know. Really. I mean, if you pick up, I mean, they now sell many, yeah. many more sort of bags of chocolate than they used to, don't they? Yes. I mean, I quite like the little um, twirl. Is it twirls? You know, the little flakes. Flakes. The, f- the flakes that are. That are well, you, you know, know all about flakes. What? You've had a lot of experience of what flakes. What do you mean by yeah. that? Well, you remember the Flake Club, anyway. What? What is the Flake Club? You yeah, know, flakes. 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 I mean, people who are... Uh, Half-bakes. Half-bakes. Half-bakes flakes. Half-bakes it's you. and flakes. Well, yeah. thank you very much for that. What I'm saying no to you is, is that, Ooh. you know, there used to be things called a, a Cadbury's Ripple, which oh, was a, ripple. a flake which was covered in chocolate. Yes, right, right? OK. You can now buy... Uh, you know, packets full of small things, which are uh, like, oh, see, yeah. which are like bite-sized. Yeah, those. yeah, I know what you mean, like yeah. Twix bites. No, not Twix bites. Well, no, I mean, they're, Twix they're used flakes. to be a long bar, but you can buy little Twix bites. That's you, what I'm saying. Well, Same these thing. Are, yeah. These are flakes, but covered in chocolate. Yes, okay. right. So you can mm. buy one of those, but you shake it, and you know yep. that there's a lot of air in it. Yes, right. Yes. And it's a pound or something. Pound. And you buy it, or you don't buy it. Yeah, well, that's I don't true. Really care. Yeah, I don't care. You know, there's a lot of air in it. Yeah, a four hundred and sixty gram box. I mean, you're a millionaire. Why do you care? Hang on. A 460-gram box of Maynard's Bassett's Jelly Babies... I don't buy those. ...is 18 centimetres high. <laughs> but the sweets... I know you're laughing at, but well, the what, sweets... What difference does it make? Well, because the sweets only come up to 10 centimetres right. inside the box. Well, so what? So you've got 8 centimetres... I don't care. ...spare. That's nearly 50%. Doesn't matter. So you've got fresh air boxes. Well, why don't you buy bigger Jelly Babies? Boxes of fresh air. Eh? And a few Jelly Babies in them. That's what's alleging here. What about Easter eggs? What? They're hollow. Oh, it says here, uh, a £3.50 avocado wrap. What? Funnily enough, because we were talking about avocado yeah. all night, you right? You can buy them in Tesco's for 49 pence, by the way. Norman sent us a, uh, a picture. Oh, that's great. Uh, look as if the... A £3.50... Where did get that guy Patrick Lucy from? He's talking absolute cobblers. A £3.15 avocado wrap from Pre a manger Who? L- Pre a manger <laughs> looks about 24 <laughs> centimetres long. But in fact... Well, you look about five foot six when you put your no, high heels on. No, but in fact, it's cut in two in the middle. Really? And then pulled apart... Think about doing that to you. ...with a wrap around it to make it look very long, but really? there's nothing in the middle. Brilliant. Ooh. Fantastic. Thanks yeah. for that. You got any more updates on the food uh, no. supermarket front? The food chain, you mean? <laughs> this is Talk Sport. <laughs> this is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. You can tweet us at the two mics, of course. Uh, yep. Here's one from Ben, who's clearly got the wrong end of the stick here. He says, MG needs a fag. Very, very angry tonight. Don't know how Mike Perry is pulling up with it. I don't know where yeah. you people get this kind of idea well, from. Well, you have become... In- no, very irritable Incredibly, and um, uh, no, and somewhat edgy and rather rude. Yeah, but in, I mean, uh, yeah, but, but, in your you've, but you've been like that your entire life. 
right? No, I do it with charm. No, you don't. I no. do it with charm and a bit of me. feeling. I mean, you've been rude to me ever since I've ever known you. No, no, I haven't. No, I haven't really. I think you'll find that's true. Anyway, there's one here from Adam, yeah. which uh, is rather nice. I'm going to read it out because I think it's directed at me. Is it? Uh, it says to the two mics, Hi, yeah. guys, just wanted to say that you both keep me company on my night shift every night. Thank you and keep it going, says Adam. That's nice. That's OK, Adam. Very nice. Thank you very much indeed. Luke says, apparently you can't grow one avocado tree. You need to grow two. Eh? Apparently you need to grow two avocado trees. Have you seriously never seen that thing where you no. must have seen it? Because it was a big thing in the 70s. Like you go no. to somebody's house, right? Yes. And you would get, um, you know, those, um, you know, sort of prawn, uh, what, do you, what do you call them? Cocktail sticks, right? Cocktail sticks. And you would yeah. take the avocado um, um, stone, stone. And, you would, and you'd have one cocktail stick on one side, one on the other, and one sort of in the top. And you would suspend it in a glass of water. Yeah. And people would try and grow the avocado. No. You never saw that? No, I've never seen really? it, honestly. That must be some trendy thing that you went to with people whose minds were altered by well, drugs. No, no, no. I, th- I would have thought it was the yeah. sort of thing perfectly uh, sort mm. of balanced for your kind of petty bourgeois lifestyle. No, that not you've at all. Lived. Somebody sent me a picture of avocado bites. Bites? Yeah, look at that. You know, like uh, oh. you know, like shrimps. No, I don't like yeah. that. No, I don't either. I don't that uh, listen, that experiment you've just talked about. Yeah. Did, you, did you not ever do that as a kid in junior school with a broad bean? Um, no. Oh, I we never did. did. What you do is you get a jam jar, right? Yeah, right. And then you get a piece of blotting paper mm. and you put the blotting paper in a circular cone inside the jam jar. Yeah. What well, you mean? You cover the inside of it? Yes, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. Then you put an inch of water in the bottom of the jam jar. Yes. Which then creeps up the uh, blotting paper. Okay. Right. Yes. Now then, between the blotting paper and the glass, you put a broad bean. Mm. Just a broad bean. That's all. Don't need to do anything special right. with it, just a broad bean. Right. And you just drop it into the bottom of the jar? No, no, you put it in the space between the uh, blotting paper and the glass. Right. Right? Oh, you mean on the outside somehow? Well, well, no, on the inside of the glass yes. and the blotting paper yes. on the inside, you yes. put it in that Somewhere gap there. there. Yeah, okay. yeah. Right. And then you just leave it and right. it grows into a broad bean tree. Really? Yeah, it does, well, yeah. Has that ever happened, though? Yeah, yeah, well, we, you we did You actually grew it. a broad bean tree? Yeah, I did, Rubbish. yeah. I don't I believe did. you. I did, I did. I don't believe you. I did. I well, took it home and planted beans? it. Well, how many broad beans did you get from the tree? Hundreds. Rubbish. Hundreds of Absolute broad beans. Rubbish. No, you did. Everybody really? did it. Everybody did it. I yeah. never did that. Listen, I need to tell you about, because um, somebody reminded me, mm. uh, you know, we're talking about uh, marriage and weddings. Oh, yeah. Well, do you remember a colleague of ours called Mark Yule in Manchester? I do remember him, Little yeah. Little chap with blonde hair. Yule. Because yeah. I remember he used to, because I thought it was quite an unusual name, Mark Yule. Yes, yeah. And I think I remember him saying to me, yeah. and then you'll correct me if I'm mm. wrong, mm. that Yule was some some town up there in that part of the world, wasn't there? Wasn't there a town called Yule? No, I don't think so. That was Ghoul, wasn't it? Ghoul, yeah. Ghoul. Ghoul's in... Um, is in, well, Yorkshire, isn't it? Ghoul's in Yorkshire, yeah. that's right, yeah. No, Yule was quite a popular name, but it's right. a Scottish name. Is it? Yeah, because uh, I had he a was secretary... quite an odd bloke. I had a secretary called... Uh, You'll be sorry. No, 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 <laughs> no, but her surname was Yule, right. and then she got married to some oaf, right. um, you know, who I helped her out with. Oh, yeah. um, well, but, you set her up with this guy. Uh, no, no, well, no, so no. you could take her off your hands. Well, no, 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 I no, no. Did. I helped make her life better from the misery of her marriage. Okay. But, um, oh, but, so what, she was already married to this guy? Yeah, she was already married to him, yeah, but her original name yeah, was Yule. Yeah, disgraceful. And, uh, and, but anyway, talking about Mark Yule, right, yeah, yeah. he was quite an offensive young fella, and he was always good company yeah. in the pub. He's always yeah, like, yeah, so like that. yeah, you're very nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, you know. yeah, come from Manchester. Yeah. I'll tell you up there, we don't have like, you know, a few pints of tatley and no. you know, all that kind of stuff, yeah. you know. And, he, never uh, quite in, he never quite settled in London, did he? Well, he never quite sort of settled anyway, really. He was a bit of a sort of rubber band type yeah, yeah. Uh, guy, you know. Mm. Um, and I think in the end, he became the last northern news editor of the Daily Express. In Manchester. When we only yes. had two people. I think you're right. It was him yes. and somebody else, and I think... Was it not Harry... What's his face? Harry Cook. No, Harry he, Cook, who no. ended up urinating in some poor woman's front <laughs> garden. Do you remember <laughs> that story? Well, yeah, I remember <laughs> a lot of stories about Harry. But, uh, no, Harry was... He was, uh, like, he was appalling. Mm. He, oh, he was a, a guy. Yeah. Uh, he was sent round to some woman's house to get a story. Yeah. Right? And it was the usual thing where, you know, he went around there at 10 o'clock in the morning. That's right, He yeah. knocked on the door, you know, excuse yeah. me, madam, you know, uh, yeah. I've got a call from the Daily Express. Hey, you, you better talk you, to me. Would you mind talking yeah. to me about this story? And yeah. She said, oh, I'll tell you so, I'll mm-hmm. talk to you. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. of course, he went away, Yeah. came back yeah. about 11.30. Yeah. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. You know, she said, oh, I told you already, I don't want to mm-hmm. talk to you. He said, well, yeah. look, I've been told by my news desk I've yeah. got to get something from you, yeah. otherwise yeah. I won't be able to leave. You know? Yeah, I'm staying here all day. And, you know, I'll stay here all with all that yeah. rubbish, right? So went to the pub after being rebuffed again. Yeah. Eventually, she yeah. rang the news desk in mm. London, apparently, mm. this mm. woman. I don't know what the story was. Yeah. At about four o'clock mm. and told this, regaled this story mm. to the guy that was sitting there listening. Yeah. Saying, look, I didn't mind when he knocked my door for the mm. third time. Mm. But I have to say, 
you know, I found it quite, uh, you know, absolutely horrendous. Yes. I looked out my upstairs bedroom window yeah. to see him urinating in my front garden. Well, there was Harry because, all over him, I'm afraid. Because I'd refused to actually yeah. speak to him. He was very uncouth. Oh, terrible. He was totally uncouth. I mean, but because they were scaling down the office uh, so um, massively... Right. He ended up as the Northern News editor. Yeah. I mean, I've never found a man Ghastly less suited man. to the job. No, terrible. So he decides on day one, yeah, I'm going to sort out the office in Glasgow. <laughs> what are them buggers up there do? They don't do nothing. Right, get me yeah, a it's flight. It's like Napoleon complex. Yeah, 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 get me a flight to Glasgow, from Manchester to Glasgow. Would have been quicker to drive. Yeah. But anyway, so uh, so uh, he rings up the bloke in charge in Glasgow, George Birrell, was it? Is it George Birrell? Yeah, George, yeah, yeah. George Birrell. That's yes. right, yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, hey, George, how are you? I'm in charge now. We're coming up here. And I want the best <laughs> blinking oyster bar in Glasgow. Do you hear me? <laughs> so, uh, so Harry goes up there and pretends to be the boss. Yeah. You know? Uh, in fact, he was in charge of about three people, yes. you know what I mean? Right. Right, where's the oyster bar? Right. Get in there. And he was so offensive to the waitresses. Did he not say to Reganos, wasn't it? Reganos he went to? Well, well, I don't know. You know the not, famous, which is the yeah, famous yeah, sure, kind of, you know, sure, that's where sure. Rod Stewart goes. Uh, yes, that's right. Mm. Yeah, it could have been. I, d- I don't know. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> the meal, Harry thought that he had a witty sort of exchange with the waitresses yeah. throughout the dinner. Right. But in fact, when the bill came and all that, and he had to pay it because he was the boss, that kind of passed him by. What do you mean? I'm the boss. Yeah, well, the bosses usually yeah, pay Harry. Right. What? I thought you were supposed to be paying for me. Yeah. No, no, Harry, you pay because no, you you, you're, yeah. you're taking the staff out. Right. Am I? Right. So yeah, he was as thick as a plank, Harry. I he mean, wasn't bright. He was a thick Yorkshireman. Yeah. So he paid, and then he offered the, um, the waitress a ten pound tip. Right. And she said, "No, I'm sorry, sir. I don't take money from people like you." Right. <laughs> He's been so offensive all the way through. Unbelievable. But the the funniest story about Harry was he was married to a woman who was off her rocker, yeah. right? And they had a very, strangely enough, yeah, yeah, they had a very turbulent marriage. Yeah. So, well, he was he a ghastly a, character. Oh, he was a terrible bloke, and he had a so very, he's still alive. He had a very young mistress as well. Did he? I mean, she was uh, she was thicker than him. <laughs> uh, this was a young Yorkshire girl. And, oh, you know, because he used to bring her to do as you say. Oh, Harry, I so respect him. You know, he's done everything in life. Do you know he once went down a trawler out of Whitby. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. Right, yeah. And, uh, yeah, God. and anyway, what was her name? Gail. Gail. Her name was Gail. Gail the mistress Force. was Gail, yeah, right. yeah. So, but, but Harry's wife, you know, had a life of sort of hell. But she was off a rocker as well. So, what happens is, one time, Harry comes in, he always right. had sort of injuries, you know. I right. mean, they, him and his wife used to fight. So, he comes in one time and. Uh, he said, uh, hey, boss, might have to be signed off today. So Stan Blenkinsop, who was the news editor, said, uh, uh, what's the problem, Harry? What's the problem? He said, well, I can't write nothing. He said, sorry, why can't you write nothing? Or nothing. Yeah. Uh, uh, my hand's gone. <laughs> so he looked at his hand and it was all terribly burnt, you know. And what his, uh, what his mad wife had done is right. they, had a, uh, they had an electric uh, cooker. Yeah. So it had electric hot plates, right? Yes. So she, I mean, they, they must have had a terrible marriage. She says, Harry, I've asked you three times to fix that uh, that oven. And he says, well, what's wrong with it? You know, they used to drink quite a lot as well. What's wrong with it? What are you moaning about? She says, the plates on the top don't work. Right. He says, they don't work? She says, no, they don't work. I switched them on, they don't work. Well, what do you expect me to do? Well, come and have a look and see what you can do. So she says to him, that plate doesn't work. Look, put your hand towards it. I've switched it on. You'll yeah. see there's no heat. And Harry did, but it was perfectly working. And she put her hand on top of his and put it down on the <laughs> ring. <laughs> and he was going, ah, ah. And she wouldn't take her hand off right. it and burnt to his flesh and everything. It was Dear terrible. God. But she trapped him into yeah. burning his hand. Thinking that would put him out of business as a reporter because the report needs his hands, all right? It's ridiculous. Just mad. But That's anyway, incredible. we've got back to Mark Yule, well, right? Hurry up because we're nearly out of time. I know, I know. So, Mark Yule, yeah. so, you know, you know, they're a bit crazy, these Yorkshire people. Yeah. So he says, uh, So, how many times have you been married, Mark? Uh, three. Mm. Oh, OK, great. That's uh, quite a lot because you're only young, aren't you? You're about 28 or 29. He, said, he yeah. was young, yeah. Yeah, he, he said, Yeah, he said, the first one, he said, I was very young. He said, I was 18 or something like that. I think he had to get married, um, right. as I Shotgun recall. Shotgun wedding. The second one, I think, was in his early 20s. Yeah. And I said, how did that go? He said, not well. Right. I said, why? He said, well, 
at the last minute, I didn't want to get married, and I was so drunk on my wedding day, I can't remember the ceremony. Right. Uh, in fact, I couldn't remember my wife's name at the altar. Uh, <laughs> it lasted four days or, or something like that. And, and, and then he'd gone and got married again. And mm. so by the time I was, you know, I don't know where I was working. I think, oh, I think the I was third working. marriage, I think he quite wanted to do. There was he? a third one. I think I was working for the Press Association yeah. then in London, and we were thinking of maybe taking him on as a Northern correspondent. No, yeah. And he invited me up to Manchester to have lunch with his family. Yeah. But I just thought that's a bit too much going to somebody's home like that. Mm. And, and so I said, no, you come out. And we well, often got smashed somewhere, you know, all that right. kind of stuff. Very nice chap, very amiable, but never seen him since. Really? And that was about, golly, I don't know. Is he still alive? 20, well, I have no idea. How yeah. would I know? Right. How would I know? As long as he hasn't got a burnt hand. No, indeed. This is talk sport. Mm. <laughs> See, I guess this is Pro Bowl Harum Conquistador, yeah, but right. I don't recognise it at all. Yeah, oh, I do. I remember this one. Yeah, I remember it. Yeah. Really? Um, one last thought about old uh, Harry Cook, by yeah. the way. He, um, when I was uh, El Supremo down here and he was running the Northern News Desk, I mm. said, well, come down for a couple of days because you've never done, been a news editor yeah. before. And I said, you can sit on the desk down here and see how it's done, you know. Right. Well, all right, great, mate. So when we got down here, I said, look, Harry, I'll tell you what, mate, you got to go back and do that. I'll take you out to Chinatown tonight. You know, you like right. a bit of Chinese, don't you? Oh, I love Chinese, I love it. Right. So we go towards Chinatown, the taxi, and he says, dim sum. I said, what, sorry? Yeah. Dim sum. That's what I like. I like the dim sum. Right. I said, right, I'd never had dim sum. It's dim sum is dim like... Dim sum's like dumplings. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, very good. I said, oh, OK. So we go to this Chinese restaurant and I said, uh, and he shouts at this uh, Chinese waiter, got any dim sum, mate? Yeah. You know, the Chinese waiter, oh, what, do you want dim sum? Dim sum! Yeah. So anyway, it's all right on the plate. you'd been at the pub for several hours by the stage. Well, he had, uh, and uh, I hadn't because I, he'd come down, he was waiting for me downstairs in the bar, you yeah. see what I mean? But I'd just, uh, I'd just sort of left about 7.30. But he was uh, heavily intoxicated, right. and watching this northern lout eat dim sum yeah. was uh, appalling. Quite unappetizing, I would have thought. Well, what he used to, I didn't realize you ate it by hand. Mm. And what he was doing is he was picking or up dim sum. chopsticks. No, he, he was eating by hand. Right. He was picking it up, eating by hand. Yeah. But he was so intoxicated, he kept missing his mouth mm. and it kept hitting him in the eye right. and the nose and the, oh his cheek and everything. It was appalling, appalling. you know. That is terrible. Anyway, Talking of that. nights out, by mm. the way, I meant to ask you this yesterday mm. because uh, it was something I read a couple of days ago. Yeah, yeah. Was Wayne Rooney not spotted in a pub in Chester? Well. After uh, after hours when uh, the lovely Mrs. Rooney mm. was meant to be away in the Caribbean on holiday no, with the kids. No, she wasn't. Do you know who she was? Where was she? She was in Spain and she took her oldest boy okay. to to the new camp. Is that Kai? Uh, prob- probably, Is that yeah. Kai, the oldest one? Well, they're all, they've are all they all got names beginning with K, yes. so I, I sometimes forget. Right. But I, I think, I think Kai is the oldest one. Kai is the oldest one, OK, I yeah. So. And uh, I saw a report that she'd taken him to the um, new camp for right. the first ever visit there, okay. you know, obviously. Well, why didn't Wayne go? Well, because he, he, he'd been playing football he on was Saturday, playing, and this he? happened yeah. on a Sunday night. Oh, yes. No, he'd been playing well, he football he was playing on against Sunday. Swansea, wasn't he? He scored the penalty. Yeah, that's right, right? yeah. Yeah. And then he went out that night, I think. I think that's when I read that he went out. Um, where was the Swansea game? That was in Swansea, wasn't it? No, it was, it was Old Trafford. It was Old Trafford. Yeah. 1-1. One, one. Yeah, so you're, my you're belief right, yeah. was that the, the, the story that I thought I read was yeah. that that was the early game, mm. right? Mm. He then went off yeah. on the Terps uh, with a bunch of people. Yes. And, and supposedly, according to the story I read, yeah. had a taxi take him to Chester. Yes. I don't know why, particularly this particular pub in Chester. Yeah. Um, which was known for, for a sort of after-hours drinking. And then he was taken home, yeah. and the story said that he was so bladdered that he couldn't tell the taxi driver where to go. No, uh, there's two stories. Yeah. I, I saw the report. Yeah. Now, what was in Chester mm. is he went to a place called the Marlborough Arms, yes, that's which right. is in St John Street, uh-huh. uh, next to what used to be the post office. Is that by the old uh, city wall and all that? Uh, it's just beyond the city walls, actually. Uh-huh. But the it's quite interesting... Because I, last time I was in Chester, I didn't actually go down that street because there was never anything very interesting there. Right. It was where the post office and the library was, you uh-huh. know. But um, this Marlborough Arms is right opposite Chester's now most popular nightclub. Yes. And it doesn't... But apparently cl- it's quite famous for staying open late, isn't it? It doesn't close itself till three o'clock. Yeah. It's, open, it's got right. a licence till three o'clock right. every morning. So, so it's late. So what it said but was... Surely he must have places in Manchester he can go well, to. Well, maybe he just wanted to get off his own turf, so yeah, to speak. Maybe. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what the, the story that was reported said that uh, it took him to this place with some of his mates. Yeah. 
and that they sat in a cordon off area, right. you know, that a few fans, mm. you know, wanted pictures and he was yeah. happy about that, no problem. And they said he knocked back about five pints, was the story. Yeah, I that's right, he did say. It doesn't seem to me to be excessive drinking, frankly. Well, it is if you're a professional football. Well, sure. you know, if you've just played that day and you've got a day off tomorrow or something like that, I yeah. don't know. But, um. No, I'm not saying he did anything wrong. It's no. just, I mean, we were talking about earlier about Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah. You just can't see him doing that, do you know what I mean? Definitely not. And he then went home. Now, they put that on the same page mm. as a, another story, which was from two years ago. Yeah. And it said a, it had just come to light that a taxi driver had produced a picture from two years ago right. of Wayne Rooney allegedly slumped in the back of his car. Oh, so it wasn't the same story. It wasn't the same story oh, at right. all. Slumped in the back of the car and that this guy had to drive up and down his street yes. for half an hour because Wayne couldn't remember the number of his house. Right. Um, you know, which you can't really, because I, I mean, you, you know, you might be chauffeured to and from your house all the time, mm. or you're driving out your house and you don't know the number. Or if you've lost a pair of speech, it's not always easy well, to tell. Well, I don't know, but I mean, you know, <laughs> I thought I once took a taxi home with the last five bucks that I had yeah. from Costello's, right, to uh, uh, from Forty Fourth Street and Second, which yeah. was where Costello's was, yeah, back down to my apartment on Twenty Sixth between Third and Lex, the ten minute walk. Uh, well, I could have walked it, but I'm yeah. too bladder Yeah, right? that's right. When I got down there, mm. I realised I'd just moved to Eighty First Street. Oh well, mm-hmm. and uh, I didn't have any money to get another cab, so yeah. I had to walk all the way back the other way. That's a long walk. Up that hell. was a long walk. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but I thought it was a bit off, really, um, publishing a story from two years ago. Yes. That you need to a few well, drinks I must because admit, I read the it could have happened online. in the summer, you well, know, well, I read when, the story when he online, wasn't playing. And it yeah. wasn't very clear that yeah. they were two separate incidents. They're two separate incidents, definitely, right. yeah. So I thought it was a little bit unfair. Okay, so you were okay with all that then? Yeah, the I was like, I, 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 well, that's, that's I'm just surprised that, New, that, that Chester was the place that he would go to. Because, well, I mean, his house is not that near Chester, is it? Um... I should imagine it would take three quarters I mean, of an hour. I don't hour know in that cab. part of the world terribly yeah, well. Yeah, well, you, you, you'd come from like uh, literally stockbroker belt Cheshire. Yeah. Over the uh, M6 and uh, it's down quite the a Manchester long, it's Road quite to a Chester. Long walk, isn't it? Well, quite a long, you know. It's about three quarters of an hour. Yeah. Uh, talking about um, right, talking about uh, feeding as we were earlier, right? Feeding. Feeding. Right. Um, the councils in in Devon are now bringing in orders to get rid of seagulls, which they say have become dangerous. East Devon District well, Council... Well, you have to do something about seagulls. Yeah, East Devon District Council has banned the feeding of birds on any of its beaches uh, with a public space protection well, order. you've got to be stupid to feed them. I mean, well, these things are massive. It's, uh, it says... Um, uh, the situation's got completely out of hand. If anybody thinks that we can have a Mary Poppins situation, feed no. the birds top into a bag, Rubbish. you can forget it. These birds are so dangerous, they, they have been uh, blamed for killing a tortoise by pecking it to death. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Uh, they've attacked dogs. Yeah. Uh, they take your kebab out of your hands. They take kebabs out of your hands. Uh, well, you I told say. you the one about the one that stole my sunglasses. That's, that stole your sunglasses. Yeah. Restaurants and cafes that left food waste out in open bins or that failed to clear the tables fast enough will be targeted. Uh, by the East Devon authorities. If somebody's throwing food down for the birds, it's not actually littering, so we couldn't find them for littering. But now, under this protection order, we can do something about it. Not only has a pet tortoise been reportedly killed, yeah. but birds in, but uh, there have been two reports of seagulls attacking and maybe even killing dogs. Yes. Are they not protected, though, seagulls? Isn't that the part of the problem? Well, I don't know. Because I know that when uh, I first moved to Edinburgh, yes. um, you were not allowed to do anything to seagull nests they were not supposedly uh, yeah. able to be attacked by anyone. And if you wanted to complain yeah. about a seagull yeah. nesting on your roof of your house, yes. you had to go to the council, right. who then had to consider whether or not they were allowed to do it okay. because they're a protected species and you can't actually kill them off. Well, under this emergency power that they've uh, granted themselves, East Devon District Council, yeah. anybody now who deliberately throws bread to a seagull can be fined well, £2,500. I'm all in favour of that. Now, the other thing it says here is, it says... Um, um, the ban includes beaches at Exmouth, Budley, Salterton, Sidmouth, Beer and Seaton. Do you a... not mean Budley, Salterton? Eh? Budley, Salterton is one place. Isn't oh, Budley, Salterton is yes. one place. OK, Budley, Salterton, Sidmouth, yeah. Beer, or Beer and Seaton is one place as well. Uh-huh. Latest example of council measures to control the birds. Right. A seagull knocked a glass of wine over actress Sophie Marceau. Who? In Sophie Marceau. Who's she? An actress. Well, yeah, I know uh, that, but I mean, yeah. is she famous? Well, I'm, I'm trying to find out. Mm. In 2011, moments before she was due to walk down the red 2011? carpet... 2011? 2011. Well, hang on, that's uh, six years ago. Yeah, hang on, hang on, I'm telling you what's going on. Right. Uh, just before she was due to walk down the red carpet at the Cannes City Film Festival, OK? OK. Apparently she was in Braveheart, I'm told. Oh, was she? French actress. Oh, maybe she was uh, Braveheart's wife. Maybe. 
Oh, no, she, I know she was. She was the king's Mistress? son's wife. Oh, yeah. yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so she had a glass of wine knocked over in 2010. Yeah, that's what it says here. Well, so what? Well, what it's saying is, this is they're cataloguing the history of trouble. From, well, is that the most recent thing they could find? I think so, yeah. Well, that's no From good. Uh, seagulls. The great black-backed gull, the largest in the seagull family, yeah. can weigh up to 1.7 kilograms, yeah. but have a wingspan of over five feet. They are massive. I mean, if that's you get huge. a seagull, if a seagull was that's standing huge. here, right... In mm. Hastings, the seagulls are almost... Yeah. Their head would almost reach up to this table. That's terrible. That's how big they are. Shocking. And you can't do anything with them. No. If you hit them in a car, yes. they just shake it off. Yeah. Incredible. Really? Yeah. Amazing. Are you ready for us? A number of different subjects. We've got loads and loads of different questions yes. here for you. Uh, as ever, Porky, I would just like to say, can we get through to as many as possible uh, with as we such, always uh, do. such good advice, but also such succinct advice, if that is at all possible? So you'd like brevity? I'd like brevity, okay. but I'd also like uh, suc- a succinct, uh, um, yes. a very, very good yes. advice. Now, okay. let's start off with one from Suzanne, right. who says, my son Murray has become addicted to your podcast. Mm. Should I be worried that this is interrupting his university studies? Mm. Absolutely not. Uh, I think you'll find on our podcast, offer a view of life very different sometimes to what a university student will see, but it will undoubtedly broaden his education, open his mind to fresh ideas and, may I say, educate him. Indeed. Uh, Here's one from John. It says, Dear Porky, how do you think Newcastle United will do in the Premier League next season and Sunderland in the Championship? I think Newcastle will finish mid-table in the Premier League, but that depends an awful lot on how much money Mr Ashley um, puts... uh, uh, makes available to uh, Rafa Benitez. They won't be challenging for, you know, top six, seven spot. I think they'll finish about 12th. Uh, announced for Sunderland in the Championship. Again, it depends very much on Mr Ellis, the owner, as to how much money he's going to extend to the manager. If the manager's Davy Moyes, rumours tonight that Davy Moyes might be thinking of leaving. But Sunderland should be able to get back first time by the sheer power of the size of their club. 40,000 fans every week. They've got to have a chance. Gary says this on Facebook. Dear Porky, I was restricted to leaving my lovely flat in Romford while bladder racing into moving north to Birkenhead. Honestly, while being madly in love with a woman from that part of the world. Mm. How do I convince her to move back to civilization. I feel like Oliver Twist when he's kidnapped from the lovely posh family and taken back to Fagin's hovel. There's nothing wrong with Birkenhead. Birkenhead is the home of my mother and father. You know, Prenton, Birkenhead is where they come from. Birkenhead's a fine city, fine people. Um, if you don't want to live in an industrialised part of uh, Birkenhead, i.e. city centre or, or you know, um, industrial estates, which I have up there, because a lot of shipbuilding and that sort of stuff, there is plenty of uh, places out just outside of Birkenhead uh, on the Wirral. You know, you can go across the other side of the world to Neston uh, or you can move up and down um, to Great Sutton or even to Hoylake at the top. It's a lovely part of the world. Here's one which is possibly controversial from Stephen. He says, I have a married woman showing interest in me. Should I pass on it or take action? Her husband treats her very badly. Um, is this a chap who's saying? Uh, this is Stephen. Saying him, yes. there's a married woman uh, paying attention to him. That's right. I would, if I were you, take your chance in life, mate, because, you know, life's too short. And if you're unhappy in the relationship you're in, there's no reason why you shouldn't explore uh, another option. But you mustn't be cruel to the person you're with. You've got to be open and honest about it. I know that's difficult when you're committed, but go to somebody and say, I'm not happy with the situation here. I'm looking around. OK, uh, here's one from Claire. It says, I'm planning my holiday. Is it mm. acceptable for a woman over 40 to wear a bikini or should I change to a one piece costume? Well, I'm sorry, but the absolute answer to that without being sexist in any way at all is it depends exactly what bodily form you have uh-huh. and whether you find it acceptable to yourself or not. Never mind what anybody else thinks. Yes. But wearing clothes on a beach is all about self-confidence. I've been out with ladies who I thought had tremendous figures, but who would always wrap a sarong around themselves because, for instance, they say my hips are too wide and all that kind of stuff. Stuff, mm. You know, so it's really it's it's the personal body image which you have, which can only answer that question for you. If you feel comfortable in, do it, but do be bold and uh, and say, you know, I'm not I'm not ashamed to show myself to the world. Exactly. Richard says this. Porky, of all the rich and famous people you have met in your role as man of the people, who left their mark the most, and which of their qualities have you tried to ingrain into your own modus operandi? Um, there's not enough time to answer that question because various different people I've met have impressed me in many, many different ways. But you won't be surprised to hear me say that the most recent sort of superstar celebrity that MG and I have met is Rod Stewart. And I have to say, I found the the guy a complete gentleman. I mean, we, you know, we, we've sort of touched upon 
uh, meeting Rod before, but yeah. to meet him for a period of time, go to a football match with him. What a gentleman. What a great father to uh, his, his little lads who he brought with him. And uh, what a thoroughly decent chap, considering he is one of the most famous men in the world. Uh, here's one from the big one. He says, what does Porky think of Lou, Lou, Lou Kirk, who's non-performance against Chelsea? Should he therefore now be sold? Uh, it was a bit worrying that he met um, the Chelsea director of football in the tunnel at the end of the uh, game. Mm. And uh, Mr. Emanola, is it? And I'm not uh, sure. Yeah, and they, had a, they seemed to have a bit of a tete chat. Tete. Uh, yeah, a bit of a tete tete. I think it's largely accepted that um, Everton are going to be in a position to have to listen to suitors for Lukaku in the summer. But if he plays many more games like he did against Chelsea, I'm not sure how much interest will be in him. Yeah, indeed. Uh, here's one from Luke who says, should I study upholstery at college? There seems to be a lot of money in it. Well, if that's a joke question, um, I can turn to a serious question for you because if you get good at a trade, any trade, electrician, plumbing, woodwork, upholstery, what you then do is you set out in life to make yourself better than the rest. And so, for instance, instead of being an upholsterer employed by somebody else, start your own upholstery business. Then you become independent in life. Then you work for yourself. Then you dictate your own terms. So I would say go ahead. It's a rare skill, upholstery, but it's one that people need. Here's another one about uh, possible future employment. Paul says this. Porky, should I move to Australia or stay put in Blighty? I'm a carpenter and my wife is a nurse. Well, that depends what the opportunities are over in Australia. I think Australia's a great country. But let me tell you this. You will have to be a sun worshipper to go and live in Australia. I've been to Australia quite a few times, three or four times and I love the place but I can only take it in small doses in terms of the time I'm there because it is so terribly hot even mm. in their winter, it's very very hot and uh, that the climate doesn't suit me, the people do, the country does and their attitude to life does I would say weigh it up on the opportunities uh, down under or here If you could sing a duet with Sir Rod says Stuart, which song would you pick? Uh, well probably um, my favourite Rod Stewart song which is Wear It Well I got nothing to do on this hot afternoon except to settle down and write you a line. That would be a dream. OK. Here's one from Pete. He says, uh, why is Paul still saying Barcelona despite corrective input from his language expert and explanation, please? Yeah, you're absolutely right. It is Barcelona. It is not the bath. There's no curl in it. It's Barcelona. And I will uh, call it Barcelona from now on. Thank you for the reminder. OK. Now, we've got one here from... Yeah. Uh, let me just... Sorry, I have to go back slightly mm, to find mm, it. Mm. Um, it says, from Enzo. So, uh, dear Porky, I'm visiting London from the United States and I'm having an awesome time, mm. but it would be very special if I could meet you or and possibly with, together with MG mm. before I leave on Thursday morning. Can we make this happen? He's from New Jersey, says Enzo. Well, Enzo, it's very kind of you to want to uh, get into the company of MG and myself. I can't make it happen, I'm sorry. Between now and Thursday, I have a very packed schedule. Uh, we do the shows here and Mike and I have so many other things that we have to get on with. Porky scratchings, meeting publishers... Uh, selling T-shirts, all sorts of things, and uh, you know other projects like making podcasts and things. But I do wish you a great stay in London and hope that if at some future date and gives a bit more notice, we can make it possible. Now, here's another football question from Josh. Will Forrest stay up this season with one game to go? We're on equal points with Blackburn mm. and are only one uh, yeah. above them by one goal on goal difference. Yeah, I don't know, but I hope so, because uh, Nottingham Forest are a legendary club in this country because of the efforts of Brian Clough. 48 and... points apiece, a yeah, terrible that... situation. A terrible situation, and you went in two uh, European Cups back to back. Your fantastic uh, tradition and heritage. I hope you stay up. But then again, when I say I hope you stay up, it means it's condemning somebody else to relegation. So I'm afraid at the end of the day, the tables don't lie. Every club gets what it deserves. Michael says this What would you find the most difficult living without your maid, stroke, housekeeper, or alcohol? Uh, alcohol, I would think, because uh, I do like a few sherbets now and again. I hardly ever drink during the week now, but uh, the week when the weekend comes, a couple of pints after a walk in the country or something like that is very nice. And a bit of wine over dinner is always a very pleasant experience. Um, before I had a housekeeper, I used to do everything myself. I'm sure I could get back to that if necessary, but uh, it wouldn't be uh, my favourite position in life. But uh, here's one which is probably a bit of a trick question from yeah. Terry on Facebook. Porky, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Um, I can't answer that question, really, because you'd have to debate all sorts of issues. All I can tell you is when situations arrive in life, 
face them head on. If you don't, they just gnaw away at the back of your brain and you become frustrated and disappointed with yourself. Just smack it in the face, just head on. You know, if you've got to ring somebody, ring them. If you've got to email somebody, email them. If you've got to confront somebody uh, personally, knocking on their door and saying, look, you're doing this and it's annoying me, you've just got to get on with it. Now, this one is a slightly different version of an Ask Paul. He okay. goes from Gaz and he's yeah. been hanging around for a few days. He said, I've been texting in for a while. He says, but I could really, really do with this if you could help me out on Ask Porky. It is my son's third birthday. His Ooh. name is Joseph, and we both love the two mics. I'd love to surprise him with a mention. Mm. Could you possibly do that for him? Um, young Joseph? Young Joseph. Three years of three, age? yes. OK, well, at three, I'm not sure how much a child's taking in, really, because I think well, it's just I mean, noises, you know, isn't it? But... Family, uh, family show and all yeah, that. Yeah, OK, but listen, Joseph, if you're listening now and if you're with your dad, if your dad's there and he can give you a cuddle and pat you on your head or something, it's lovely to have... Uh, such a, a young listener who um, who takes in what we say. I wish you a really great, happy and long life. And, uh, you know, remain a Two Mics listener and we will try and entertain you for as long as we can. Steve says this, Dear Porky, will there be a new Two Mics DVD this Christmas? Well, we're not quite sure what's going on this Christmas yet. We, we've been we're in... pretty sure there will be. We're pretty sure there will be, but we're not sure what else there will be. We've been in talks with publishers to do a book and all that. We don't think we've got time to do that now. Uh, We are planning to be in New York in the autumn, from which there will be um, video recordings. Some form of scenario. Yeah, exactly. We're not actually sure at the moment whether that's going to be available sort of of the moment, packaged up in a DVD, downstreamed. Life is moving on so fast in the world of technology, but we hope there'll be something there. Sam says, Dear Porky, what was the funniest moment in your life to date? Oh, golly, I'd have to sit down and think about that. There's been quite a few funny moments, but basically more of the moments I remember in my life are dramatic moments rather than funny ones. You know, you try and have a laugh, you know, I don't know, a few times a day, don't you? Not not at anybody's expense, but just to keep life uh, going. But, you know, I do take life quite seriously. Uh, indeed. And one final one, just before we stop, uh, this comes from another person on Facebook. Mm. I haven't quite found his name here, but yeah. he's saying he wants to take his wife and family away for the first time uh, on a foreign holiday. Yes. But he's petrified of flying. Yeah. Have you got any advice for him as to how to overcome his fear? Well, does he want to go on a foreign holiday, did you say? He does. He wants to get on a plane, but he's frightened of flying. Well... His name is Brett. OK. OK, Brett, if you're frightened of flying, you want to go on a plane, you have to beat that fear. Was it recently that I read that um, somebody took a whole load of lessons to uh, conquer their fear of flying? Was Maybe. It, don't was know. It, was it uh, Countdown Lady? Um, oh, what? You know. uh, not Carol Hallam and Yeah, Rachel. I think so. Yeah, some, some, I, think, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. it's Countdown but, Lady. But anyway, look, if, you, if you're flying and you want to go abroad then don't, for goodness sake, go on a 16-hour trip to Mexico or Los Angeles or something like that. Keep it short and tight, and that's got to be somewhere like Spain or Mallorca or um, the Canary Islands, Tenerife or something like that. And just, uh, you know, take a strong drink before you get on the plane. And you haven't gone for too long. That's no. the secret. Yeah. That was Ask yeah. Porky. We'll yeah. get loads, loads more of those questions in uh, same time next week. If we didn't get to yours, I apologise, but, uh, you know, keep sending them in. This is TalkSport. <laughs> Talk Sport, we are the two mics, of course. Not just Champions League uh, coming yeah. up this week, because tonight we've got Monaco against Juventus. Yes. And we already heard from uh, Mark Donaldson earlier on that he thought that uh, Monaco might actually win this particular first leg yes. by two goals to nil. Yeah. But we've also got, uh, coming up on Thursday, yeah. you will be pleased to know, yeah. uh, the old uh, Skybet League One playoffs. Oh, and yes. guess who's in the playoffs, as I predicted? Skybet League One. Yes. For uh, pro- promotion into the championship, Fleetwood. Well, Fleetwood are yes, yeah. but think of another team that are in it as well. Another I was, team in it, uh, bigging up just last weekend. You were bigging up last weekend. Yes. My local team, your local team, yeah. Millwall. Millwall. Yeah, but they would have already Millwall. been in it when no, you were, no, when no. you were bigging them up. No, so no, that wasn't a great. No, not true. No, on prophecy, Saturday was it? No, on Saturday they yeah. were in sixth place, but they right. could have been pipped at the post yeah. if they hadn't got a victory. Uh, when they did get one, yeah. so they did very well. So they are now in the playoffs, and they're going to play Scunthorpe yes. seven forty-five on Thursday night. Uh, I think the second leg is on Sunday. Mm. But they've got a bit of a problem. Mm. Uh, they've got a flu bug. A flu which bug. Which is wreaking havoc through the, uh, uh, through the dressing room. I've so lost, I'm going to wish uh, them very well, anyway. I've, uh, I've not been forensically examining Fulham's progress. Haven't you? Are they now going to make the playoffs? Well, Bradford the, City uh, versus the Fleetwood. 
uh, in the championship, yeah. well, as we speak. Yeah, yeah. Well, the championship table... Well, it hasn't finished yet. That's uh, hasn't, a problem. Hasn't quite finished That's yet. That's right, yeah. Fulham are currently in sixth position. Yes. I think Leeds fans are very, very unhappy with you because ever since you said that, uh, you know, they would be the one you team to get through... You blame me. Well, no, ever since you said that they would be the team to watch, yeah. they haven't won a game. So, OK, so, so I tell my support behind the team, nobody says, oh, we don't want your support. Well, right, they... but in that case, in future, you won't get it. Well, they do say that now because basically you have ended up c- cursing the whole situation situation with Leeds United. What's Leeds United are sitting in seventh place. Gary Monk was quoted yesterday yeah. as saying that he didn't think the players were ready. Yeah, is that right? So he didn't blame the Porky Jinx, to be fair to yeah, him. Yeah, exactly. He yeah. basically said he didn't think they were ready for this kind of intensive kind of end-of-season yeah. scenario. Absolutely. But funnily enough, only a few weeks earlier, or a few days earlier, mm. people were saying about mm. Leeds United mm. that they're the one team that are going to be very good That's right. because they're properly drilled and they are, in fact, yeah. the team that should be the one that would be able to put up with the pressure yes. of playoff football. Yeah. You'd have thought so. So I'm afraid uh, yeah. Leeds United aren't going to make it. So Fulham are in there. Yeah. Um, and I guess they're probably going to stay in there, right? Yes. Fulham, Huddersfield. Huddersfield have got some kind of massive problem going on, haven't they? Have they? Isn't there some kind of problem with Huddersfield? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not aware of it. Have you not been it, reading yeah. anything over the last couple of days? Yes, I have, yeah. But I've had so much to concentrate really? on. Really? Have you... Um, are you aware of this story about this... Uh, the terrorist who... Um... Oh, the guy with the cufflinks? No, no, this is a different guy. No. The terrorist who survived the Iranian embassy siege. Oh, yes, the guy who's living on benefits. Is now on benefits yes. in this country. I am aware of that. His name is Fauzi Najad. He's 61. Yes. And he can't be sent back to Iran because of human rights laws. Yes, he now, might be killed, right? Yeah. Do you know mm. I witnessed the Iranian embassy siege? I didn't ending. know that. Yeah, I did. Well, you stationed it outside it. Oh, do you know where you were stationed? The Royal Gardens Hotel. Well, I imagine, yeah. And because which is just literally down the road. Yeah, you, but you know? can see it from there. You have to be outside the building. We were outside the building. We were, we were outside the building, and I'm sure, you went down the pub. Well, you'd been taking shifts down the pub, like with everybody else, you know, shifts. people covering and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> and it so happened I was there, and all of a sudden somebody said something's happening, and uh, these guys suddenly mm. uh, came Absailed abseiling down, down the side of the building, yeah. and we actually saw one of them get stuck right. just as the gutter comes onto the roof. And yeah. then it was it was amazing. Yeah. It was the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life. Have you seen that? Uh, there's a fantastic documentary that was done yeah. with one of the guys who was part of that crew. Right. Right. who was a Scotsman, Yes, and he talks about, and they sort of reenacted it, and they talked about how they did it, and how having gone into the to, to, you know into the rooms themselves, yeah. how they just sort of shot people. Yeah, they did. And, and, you know, they filmed this kind of reenactment yeah. with him saying, then I popped this guy. It was incredible it, stuff. It, it was absolutely amazing. And what happened was, this Fauzi Najad just pretended to be a hostage and mingled with the rest of them, took all his, you know, took his his uh, Arabian clothes off, you know, and, and mingled them and yeah. got out into the garden right. before one of the SAS men recognised who he was, pulled him back in. Right. And then the story is he was then ordered by his commander to kill him mm. because the British government did not want one of these guys in their jail right. because they would have been held to hostage later yes. if somebody captured a British uh, right. spy over there. They just wanted them all dead, basically. They wanted them all dead. Yeah. And this guy was the only one who survived. Mm. But the reason they were able to identify the terrorists from the hostages right. was because on the Saturday morning, it started on about a Thursday and it finished on uh, bank holiday Monday. Right. And so there were four or five days in between. But on the Saturday morning, mm. right, we were all still there. We were all sleeping in shift at the Royal yeah. Gardens Hotel, right. you know, I mean, sharing rooms and everything, and, yeah. was, and sleeping on couches in the lobby of the Royal Gardens, which is a very exclusive hotel. Yes, very much and, so. and, and the manager there, you know, wasn't happy about it, but mm. we said, what else are we going to go? Yeah, you know? right. Because all the roads were closed off around sure. the, the Kensington. Yeah, and you couldn't get into the park. Couldn't get into the park or anything. But, but, but on the Saturday morning, this... This gas truck suddenly turned mm. up, amazingly. Right. And we said, what are you doing? They said, look, there's a broken gas main. We've got to, you know, the police have allowed us in. We've got to fix the gas main. Otherwise, you'll all get blown up, yeah. you know. So uh, so all these guys came out. And was that a ruse then? Well, this is the what we, this is what I found out later. This yeah. is my exclusive story. Yeah. So they got the um, what do you call these uh, things out that give you white finger? Oh know? yeah, like the drills. The drills, yeah, yeah they got pneumatic you drills. You don't see those anymore, do you? No, you don't actually. No, you don't. No, no you don't see people. You used to see the ones that had the flat base. That's right. And the ones that had the pointy base. That's right. Yeah. You don't see either of them. Now. So so the so they got out these pneumatic drills yeah. and they're drilling away and all that kind of stuff. And you had to accept that they were there to fix a gas main, and they only stayed about three or four hours, and mm. then they went. Right. And what we learnt later, what I learnt later was that the F- SAS were in the building next door right. and they needed covering noise because right. they were drilling yes. needle-thin holes through mm. the wall right. with a camera on the end of ah, it. Yes. 
And in the end, they had 30 cameras yeah. on the wall so of the room which all the hostages. They, they then had a TV screen showing them the whole picture inside the right. room next door. Okay. And they spent 24 hours mm. studying the faces of the hostages and the terrorists so that and they knew... out where they were. The minute that they went in through the window... Yeah. This expression that you said, popping them, yeah. they weren't going to kill the hostages, they were right. going to kill the terrorists. Incredible. And they got them all except this guy. Right. They got them all except and him. So, and so the noise covered what they were doing, effectively. The noise covered them drilling yeah. through the wall. Yeah. Right. yeah. Amazing story. It really. was an amazing story. It's yeah. hard to believe. And I mean, I remember when you go back to those mm. times mm. when, um, you know, you remember like OPEC and, and the, uh, the hostages that yes. were taken um, on the train. When yeah. there was, you know, I just That's remember right. the picture of the train what sitting in the middle of Germany. What about all the aircraft that used to get? The aircraft that used to get hijacked, hijacked. over to Morocco. That's right, yeah. Back again. That's right. I mean, you know, this used to go on all the time. It used to go on all the time, yeah. And uh, Black yeah. September yeah. and the whole, I remember Munich, actually, the 1972 yeah. hostage yeah, crisis well, yeah. in the Munich Olympics, which was horrible. I mean, just Shocking. remarkable, really. Shocking, yeah. Absolutely remarkable. And I suppose... But anyway, he's now, this guy's now walking the streets. Yeah. I, I, as I recall, I think he did about 13 years in jail. Right. Um, because, of course, you know, he committed the crime here. And then he, he was he was like. Um, so how did he survive then? Did he just get lucky? Well, I said he went he went out with the hostages yeah. into the back garden yeah. and pretended to be a hostage. Mm. And then one of the SAS guys recognised mm. him and was ordered to pull him back in. Yeah. And the commander, it is claim, has been claimed since, said. Finish him off. Yeah, right. Because they, well, they just didn't do it, though. Well, I don't know what happened. I think there were too many witnesses That's what around. That's I'm saying. I mean, how did he not get I think, I think there were too many witnesses around. Mm. And, uh, and, and, and then he became a huge political problem because we thought, well, because the Iranian embassy siege was... What nationality is this guy? Um, well, it wouldn't even be Iranian, right? Uh, no, because they, it was the Iranian embassy that was under siege. Yes, I know, but it was a group of other Iranians. It was a group of other Iranians, you're right. Yeah, dissident Iranians, yeah. that's right. And, and because so, it was at the time the Shah was, in, was involved, the, wasn't it? Uh, no, the Shah had already been toppled. Really? Uh, Are you sure? Le, le, well, I th- thought these were people who were not on the side of the Shah. No, the, no, the Shah had been toppled because right. you know why? Jimmy Carter just lost the presidency of the United States okay. because of his inability to um, to rescue the hostages, to rescue the hostages there, yeah. in the in the American U.S. embassy in Tehran. Right. Okay. Yes, that's absolutely yeah. right. And so, so this guy eventually, you know, did it thirteen years or something like that. You're absolutely right. He was an Iranian dissident, and then when he came out of jail, claimed, "Look, if you send me back now, I will, you know, I'll be murdered." Mm. You know. And, and so he's uh, he's now here, living in Peckham, believe it or not. Peckham, yeah. In a in a block which was. Um, there are some people who would be more unkind than me. Yes. Who would say he might be better off risking his life going back to Iran mm. than living in Peckham. Well, that's very harsh. But that would but be unkind. Apparently, he lives in a block now which was used as the model for um, Only Fools and Horses. Yes. Which was, of course, uh, based um, in people Pe- Peckham. In Peckham, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Now here's one from Lee who says yeah. a request from a Scully fan, Scunthorpe yeah. United, of course. Could Porky please back Millwall? Back Hashtag Millwall? Porky Jinx. Back Millwall? Well, well because look, Porky Jinx, uh, because Millwall are playing Scunthorpe. Look, I don't back people for fun. I don't back people because people ask me to, request or anything like that. I back things and people and clubs and organisations that I think are worthy of backing and who I believe in. Who I believe in. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Well, I mean, lots of people yeah. are picking up on that. Uh, one says uh, yeah. from Dave, he says, poor three-year-old kid. Porky just wished him a long life. Yeah. Hashtag Porky Jinx. Uh, now, come on. That's you know, a bit harsh. Don't, uh, don't and Vin don't says, make fun uh, of, uh, I'm just checking in from Boston. Lives. Boston. Mm. I thought mm. I would say a quick hello. Uh, who's this? Vin. He's Vin. in uh, Boston. Is that a man? Uh, I would say, I would say Vinny? so. Vinny? Yeah. Uh, Vin Patel. Vin Patel, He's yeah. He's in Boston. Probably a chap. Well, OK, Vin, if you're in Boston and yeah. uh, you're having a good time. My cousin Vinny. You know what I say to you? I say, get along to the tea party, man. Yes. And make music. Absolutely make mischief. Right. And mm. Chris says, thank you very much, Porky, for sticking up for our little peninsula. Mm. If the lad doesn't like Birkenhead, he can leave. Yeah, exactly. I doubt he'd be missed. Exactly. You see, that's the kind of thing that upsets people. Mm. Why would you say that? If what? somebody doesn't like Birkenhead, you don't have to be rude about them and yeah. say, if he doesn't like it here, he won't be missed. Mm. He should be warm and generous to other people. Yeah, but you were mocking Birkenhead, you I see. wasn't. People having to go, yes, no, they were. you were the person who was mocking no, Birkenhead. I wasn't. I said You've my mo- parents were brought yeah, up Yeah, I know, but you've mocked Birkenhead in the past. I've never mocked Birkenhead. Robert says this. Hello, two mics. Mm. Uh, can you uh, give a late mention for my 55th birthday, uh, which happened on the 12th of April? Uh, and he says, will you be coming to the garage this year? Probably not to Glasgow, right? No. Don't think that's going to happen. We think we're only going to do New York yep. and maybe London. Yes. Towards the end of this year. Yes, that's right. If all goes we well. We will do a big one in London at the end yeah. of the year. If we can. Uh, what's we're still looking for name? a venue for what's that. What's the chap's name? That's Robert. 
Robert, uh, happy birthday, I pal. I think he said he came to the Glasgow show uh, both times previously. Did he so really? He yeah, OK, yeah, yeah. But never mind, yeah. we'll be back there, I'm sure, at well, some point. Take the hay uh, and you take the low road. Now, tomorrow, of course, brace yourself for Porky Vision. If you yeah. haven't seen, yeah. um, what's the name of that show? Uh, Line of Duty. Line of Duty. Mm. Watch it now uh, in order to make sure that you are prepared uh, for the denouement. Oh, I'm giving you the full Monty on how it all ended and all the twists in the plots and how they spilled out. Indeed, we shall see. This is Talk Sport. It says here, for instance, that the boost I had, right, uh, a Cadbury boost packet yeah. is 16 centimetres long. Right. So think 16 centimetres. It's hard, see, hard for me to think of that, what that is. I, I think in inch, inches still. Well, think 16 inches if you want, then. 16 inches is huge. Yeah, it is, yeah. It's bigger yeah. than a foot. It is, yeah, yeah, of course it well, is. I don't yeah. want to think about 16 inches. I want to think about All right, 16 centimetres. Well, I just want to 16 measurements, right? I'm thinking of a boost bar, which I would say is yeah, about yeah. four inches. But anyway, the point of it is that mm. the bar inside the 16 centimetre packet is just 10 centimetres long. Eh? So what they're saying is, is that, you know, more than... Uh, what's that? 16, That's two inches 10. either side. Two inches either side. That's absolutely right. Mm. 10 sixteenths. Uh, <laughs> now, that's... <laughs> hang on. Wait a minute. <laughs> If it was eight, it would be 50%. So that's about Can 60%. Draw me a diagram. About 60%. Well, what's obvious, right, yeah. is that every packet of yes. chocolate that you buy, yes. you can pinch the end of either end. That's right. And that's where the air is. That's right. It's probably about a centimetre or two. Absolutely right. right. Now, for instance, a bag of Cadbury Dairy Milk Caramel Nibbles yeah. is 14 centimetres high. Yes. But when you put it on the ground, allegedly... Why would you put it on the ground? Well, on the table. On the table. Yeah. Right. Allegedly... The nibbles inside only get up to five centimetres high. Well, so 11 centimetres of rubbish.